Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Ashes Wednesday. If you missed last week, we actually got all of the Ashes Reborn like reprint products in. The one thing we didn't get, which is funny, because it's the one thing that we're sending through a subscription, is the upgrade kit. But we have all of the expansions uh, from Ashes Reborn redone, basically. Uh, we unboxed them last week. We played a couple different decks last week. So today we're going to continue on that path, which is we have these sealed. This is how they came packaged in in the the not even a box anymore. What do you? Even it's call a clamshell. A clamshell. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to pick some some Phoenix Born, play a couple games, and rinse and repeat while we have the time, and hang out and answer questions. And we're going to answer all the questions. This is our last Ashes stream of the year, unless Zach's got weird plans that I don't know about. <laughs> so uh, this is the last chance to ask Next questions week. in 2020. Keep coming, it goes live. Not not that it uh, it really uh, changes anything. Uh, we don't expect Ashes uh, Reborn in any capacity to hit until what? Late January, maybe. So last thing that we heard uh, officially or unofficially, publicly or privately, was January. Um, yep. So no, no specifics necessarily. It's the same thing we've seen with Flesh and Blood right now. It's like getting product from one part of the world to another part of the world, especially in December, January, is a, uh, it's a feat. You've got holidays. You've got COVID. You've got Chinese New Year. Those three things, just a lot of stuff. It means that anything slated for now, between now and the next six weeks, is probably going to be here in uh, September, twenty twenty one. It's a never. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's coming. It's January. If you're on the subscription, is, that's when it'll charge. If you haven't signed up yet, it's the first thing coming to that subscription is the Reborn Upgrade Kit, which takes uh, basically all the cards being updated are in that pack from a first edition collection. Uh, it makes it super easy to to do that. And then the next release should be on schedule after that. As far mm -hmm. as I know, it's about uh, four times a year, so about every three months. The first release is going to be that Breaker of Faith Deluxe. And uh, I'm super excited because it's going to be... It's interesting because the game's going to come out, the Reborn uh, products are going to hit as well at some point mm -hmm. in the next eight weeks. Um, then the upgrade kit's going to happen, and it's going to be all these cards we already have uh, that we've been playing with. So it's it's an uh, exciting release, but also like we have a lot of time to dig through these. Yeah, we have, well, and I feel like I need it. That's the beautiful thing is like the Absolutely. the card pool that we're playing with has not has not even begun to be understood, let alone kind of mastered. Um, and then once you master the card pool, then you have the very fun little tweaking meta stuff that you've got to do, and that could last for years if we sure. just stayed put right here. Um, uh, real quick, I know probably people usually ask this every time we stream, so happy to answer it now because we love new players. Definitive. Um, there are two things that, two pathways that you really should look at when it comes to Ashes Reborn. One is you're a new player without any current product, and one is you're a player previously that has some or all of the previous 1.0 Ashes products. So you have some or all of the Ashes 1.0 products, I would suggest hopping on that subscription right now and getting the upgrade pack. Absolutely. That's going to bring all of your cards up to date, and then you have a, a essentially a clean slate from which you can go get new products and expand your collection. If you're a brand new player, I would suggest going to Plaid Hat's website and pre-ordering the Ashes Reborn core set. And if you have the budget for it, also the two deluxe expansions, which are Zach. Law of Lions and Song of Soaksund. That's right. And the reason those two expansions are so uh, valuable is because they bring in the two new dice types that the game brought in over the course of its its run. Uh, so when you have those two deluxes and the core set, you have all of the different dice, the different magic types that you see here. Uh, and that allows you to play anything that you want throughout your journey with Ashes. Um, so that's going to be really important. Worth noting, uh, the core set is actually called the Master Set. In case people are looking for it, it's they've it, core set is a. I've only seen it actually used in like LCGs, like a proper yeah. trademark yeah. Fantasy Flight LCGs. It's a Master um, Set. It's a Master Set. Mm. Uh, is what they call it. So definitely, that that's super easy way to start. And there was someone asking on chat before we started. Um, what we thought of the comparison, basically, between this and Magic. Oh, here we go. Um, Let's crack and, this chestnut open. And I, I think it's it's worth at least a somewhat... We've said it. We've answered this question a lot. This is the common uh, thing people have. Most important difference, honestly, is that this is not collectible. So when you, you buy something, you know exactly what you're getting. You can buy the entire collection of everything that exists. You can pre-order it for the Reborn stuff for like three or $400, and you own like three years of content. Um, and then the cost to continue playing and having everything... Literally, our subscription is twenty nine ninety five every three months. So it's about ten dollars a month to just keep owning everything. Obviously, a Magic booster box is like I don't know, hundred bucks. I don't even. Know. I think MSRP is like one hundred and fifty, but it never sells for that. Um, it either sells for like a hundred or like a, a million. Those are the those are the Magic Mark prices I've seen. Yeah. Uh, 
So it's a collectible game, right? Uh, you, it's random booster packs. You don't have a full play set after buying even a box. So it's just a lot more expensive. Um, I think the other thing is this game completely removes uh, one of the biggest flaws of Magic that I hear Magic players talking about, which is Mana Screw. Um, so each player starts with 10 resource dice, and that's your magic uh, that you can spend. You have 10 throughout the whole game. There's no building. Um, it just is what it is. Another really unique part of this game is the first five. So you get to pick your opening hand, and that kind of dictates how your mm, game is so going to go. So much. Yeah, it's and, awesome. And the average game lasts like three-ish, four-ish turns. Um, so it's super consistent. There's not very much randomness in this game. There's not top decking, that kind of a thing. It's not as big of a deal. Uh, and then I think the theme itself, each character is a, a literal uh, Phoenix born. Persona, yeah. Yeah, a persona. Like uh, one of my favorites here is Odette. Um, so the art style is very specific, it's very clean. It's got a, a, a brighter tone to the universe than Magic does. Magic has the kind of darker fantasy wizard kind of a thing. This is more. Um, how would you even describe There's a, probably a tonal word for that. I always go a little bit more in the direction of like Miyazaki, Spirited Away, Princess yeah, Mononoke. It's more that. in that vein than it is in like a, a traditional Dragonland style fantasy. Yeah. It's somewhere in the middle because like uh, I feel like the anime stuff is like uh, softer. This it's is a, this is a, is a little not quite that soft uh, and kind of enchanting, uh, but it's it's more in that vein I think than it is uh, in a traditional like Dungeons and Dragons uh, high fantasy style. Yeah, uh, for sure. And the diversity of representation and all the Phoenix born is is phenomenal. And then I think the other uh, one of the big things about it is like it's not so magic uh, phenomenal game because it spawned a billion different games that all are very similar which is you start with uh, more or less nothing except for an opening hand, and then throughout the game you're building a board that is going to like this big culminated state, at which point the action immediately happens and then ends. Um, and there's a million games like that, all the way from Battletech that we played, uh, all the way up to most of the recent games, mm -hmm. even most of the recent LCGs, Game of Thrones being one of them. You build your resources over time, and then you play bigger and bigger stuff, and then you see who wins. Um, and if you're tired of playing those kinds of games, which is what the vast majority of card games have been throughout history, uh, this is a very refreshing take on not quite a dueling game like Flesh and Blood. It feels a little bit more, you're still playing creatures in front of you and casting spells and, and having, uh, you know, like little ch summoned things do your bidding. Uh, but it's kind of nice right there in the middle between like a specific persona dueling style game uh, and a build your board and play magic creatures kind of game. It's sure. kind of this perfect spot in the middle, and it really just pulls it off well. And surprisingly, somehow, it's more akin to chess than I ever thought it would be. A chess style, uh, low randomness, low uh, probability uh, style game where every move can be a blunder, and then you can find your way out of a game really quickly. So <laughs> I've, I've felt that pain several times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah myself. <laughs> <laughs> Justin asking, if they're unboxing, then does that mean the Reborn Upgrade Kit will ship soon? January is still the expected time. These are for all that. production copies, though. So it means that it's being yeah. produced, and we have actual physical copies from the warehouse, from the uh, manufacturer that's doing the actual uh, reprinting and the Reborn products. So we know it's, it's real. This is not just a... <laughs> it's a, really happening. Not just a joke we're all telling ourselves. That's right. What's up, Josh? Love you, too. And, you know, like a friend or however we can love each other in a legal and uh, normal, normalized way. <laughs> legal. Um, shall we uh, Shall we break into some decks? Yeah, and feel free, if you're watching, if you have questions, uh, ask whether it's about the game itself, whatever, life, uh, or about what we're doing. Uh, I liked last week we did um, Flesh and... Was it Flesh and Blood? We, no, we played Ash's Hands Up. No, we played Flesh and Blood. We played up. Flesh and Blood's Hands Up, yeah. Uh, and I really enjoy that. We forgot to do it this week because we just got so engrossed in Flesh and Blood yesterday. We could do it with Ashes. Uh, but I think we should. You want to start there? I think we should. We can start there. Let's start there. Do you know who you want to play? I want to play Koji. The Wolf Cub. I've been wanting to play Koji for a very long time. Battlefield 10 and a very simple main or side action here to place a status token is something I'm very into. All right. Well, I'm going to play Jessa because people always ask for that. Jessa? Yeah. Nobody's ever seen Jessa played before. Jason says no champagne today. No, but we are, uh, it is Wednesday, and this is the day that um, the ops team is working on the uh, eventual, hopefully, uh, cocktail menu slash program for our new store that we're working on that should launch in 2021. Or Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Uh, and so we will get to sample some of those efforts today. I think there's maybe a white derby on tap. Uh, they're shaking that up right now, so we'll see that soon. Koji versus Jessa, how's that going to work? We'll see. 
Do you feel, do you feel the, um, there's like, it's like you feel like you're at the end of running a race. Do you feel that? <laughs> sure. Almost like you've, uh, it's not that, it's not the rush right before you cross the finish line, but kind of like right after, where you feel like you kind of went through the thing and then you're like, ah, oh, you like, breathe. just kind of settled down for a second. We, it's been a, it's I mean, been a heck of a year. We, we put out a podcast today. I, Zach, did you see that? I posted that <laughs> about an hour ago. I, I get the notification when you complete that. Test. Okay, yeah, we put out a podcast as a retrospective on our year in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, we asked a lot of uh, publishers and, and various industry folks throughout the year about how 2020 had impacted them. Did you listen back to it as you read it? What? The podcast? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. I mean, I didn't, it's, I, I didn't do a full it's really, Did you say anything weird? I haven't listened to it. It's yeah. it's weird because most of the time we're talking about other, like perspective on other things and other in, in institutions and happenings and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was very, as you said, you say, what did you say? Introspective? Yeah, it is a retrospective, but it was definitely introspective. Uh, An so introspective it's, retrospective. It's a different vibe. Yeah, it is a different um, vibe. And it's weird to talk um, about yourself, but we try to do it anyway. Yeah. This is not working. Do you need mom to open that for you? <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> Sebastian says, can someone give this poor guy a knife? I have I have one right here. You've had two pairs this whole time? <laughs> yeah, give, dumb, me that, dumb give me that ding. Now we gotta do this carefully so we don't... Slice the cards? Slice the cards. Also, um, someone asked about our UK fulfillment earlier. So it's not going to be happening on the first Ashes release, but with any luck, it'll happen on the, the one not in January, the, the second one, the Breaker of Fate. There's a lot of stuff between here and now, but we are actively pursuing that uh, aggressively. Actively and aggressively. Did, didn't Plant Hat say they were going through like standard, they were pursuing standard distro on Europe? I think particularly for all of the Reborn products, so like all the updated stuff, Yeah, that, that's that's standardly available hopefully. that's true all right <laughs> right yeah, he stabbed himself with a pen do not give him a knife uh there's also a really nice comment here crash shark saying hey crash guys shark, you're glad great. to catch another live one lockdown is going hard here in germany before christmas so i have so much free time for tc streams it's the best way to spend the lockdown well we're happy to be spending it with you we agree we talked about it in some podcasts it's like it's been a lifesaver for our own mental health just to be able to hang out with everybody here and each other i mean to some degree but mainly all of you out there uh and just you know have the have as close to the experience of kind of being in this hobby uh that we all love and and playing at an actual table with other people around milling about uh, as we can create without actually being physically present here we go let's go top down i don't i'm trying to figure out my first five. Oh yeah i need to do that too all right so let's look at koji so Koji's all about summoning these plants and then making them giant, right? Is that the idea? Does anybody have a suggestion for um, for Koji's first five? Nick may be out there, if Nick knows. I know that the first thing you look at is look at your spellboard spells. You probably want one copy of each of those because that's going to kind of dictate what you can do all game. And then you look at the dice that you need for those. So I'm going to... I need a... A music note for Join the Hunt. That uh, tells me right there. I need Summon Indigo Creeper. I'm going to need a leaf and a music note. Nick says Summon Indigo Creeper. Definitely. It's the only one. And then Summon Biter is going to be that. And then I'm going to put a random basic up here. And I'm, I'm going to do it like this. And I think most of these decks usually play pretty well on a 5-5 five, five spread. Um... So other things I might bring in, I've got a Sleeping Bear ally. It's pretty good. Ooh, I feel like Jungle Warrior is important to put status tokens on things to keep my like kind of evolutions going. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see what this looks like. I'm gonna add one here and another basic. Basic spoken for there. Um, that first turn Sleeping Bear is one of my favorite things. Zach hates it, which is why I like it so much. It's super good. Uh, ooh, Temple Elder continually churning out status tokens seems pretty in in key in character. I also think figuring out your dice spread. I think I'm on 5-5 five, five here. This looks right. 
So this, I can pay for everything here. And I've got two dice left. Nick Conley, uh, lead Maybe. designer, has some hot tips for you. He says, Des deciding on a sleeping bear is definitely a choice. If you start with it, will you have time? If you don't start with it, will you ever have time to play one? He also says, Huntmaster is a good investment. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, I'm playing Jess and Nani. 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 Uh, I'm definitely starting with Summon Blood Puppet. And then I think I want to start with a Blood Archer and a Living Doll. And then I want to get Blood Transfer on the board. I, Cut Strings is a spell I could get, but I don't think Steven's necessarily... Like, I feel like don't it's look too at specific. My board. Uh, and then I'm I'm choosing between Undying Heart and Blood Shaman. What a great choice to be making. Don't you like the sound of it? I guess I should look at my dice and see what I can actually afford. All right, here we go. And then we got one floating. That's just fine. That's just fine. And then I can maybe ping one damage if I need to. I'm going to play the bear up front because I like the bear. Now, if I swap in here... Now, this is where your first five gets interesting. If I swap in the old Hunt Master. Northern Lights games usually take 30 minutes. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. I can play that Hunt I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Nick, I'm following your advice. I'm going to do Sleeping Bear Hunt Master play here. Let's see what happens. I think I like this. So since we're playing hands off, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, I, I'm basically seeing what kind of resources I can get on the first turn. And I can basically play these two spells that I want to get in play and use them. Um, I can get two allies into play. I also have this Undying Heart, which when a unit is destroyed, it bounces that unit back to your hand instead of going away. Yeah. Um, and I like that because it gives plus one life as well. So I have a four life, and a lot of my stuff does damage to myself. Um, and if I do bounce back, I actually have the resources to play it again mm -hmm. on this turn. Uh, I also have her ability. Once per turn after using this turn, I can spend a basic to deal damage to a Phoenix Born. So if I'm if it's not looking like I'm going to use uh, blood transfer, like or uh, like an another route, I can play blood transfer, but then I can actually use it with these dice. Or if I don't, I can use her ability and use this to get an ally back as well. Yeah, yeah. So you got options, which I like. So I'm, you got I'm, options. I'm gonna. My side of the board, I'm I'm basically just going to play all three of my ready spells. I want to get my spells out. It's a wizard game, after all. You want to get your spells out. Or else, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Um, now, because some of you are new Northern Lights, I'm talking to you out there. I want to sell you on this game. Um, your spell board is, sits behind your, uh, your the action, the things that you're summoning onto the board. And these are permanent things that you can exhaust to use over the course of the game so you can continually cast these spells throughout the game. So how you decide your opening spell board really tells you kind of what style of Phoenix Born you're going to play. Now you can play Koji with any spells, right? You can swip, swap all different cards to different Phoenix Born. So I could play a Koji that looks nothing like this, but this is just the one out of the, the starter deck. So this is a cool thing to just understand that you can really customize the spells you're bringing to the board. And then uh, I'm going to choose a Sleeping Bear and a Hunt Master. That's going to be my full 10 dice worth of cost on my first five. Now, if I need to pivot and, and use a Nature Die to take off a problematic unit that Zach's thrown in front of me, that's going to compromise my plan. So I'm very tight on my first five. If I have to deviate at all, then it's going to be very, uh, very tough. I also... Let's make that a thing. You have these uh, white back cards. These are your actual draw deck. And then anything with this black back is a conjuration. Holy macaroni. And these things just come in and go out and come in and go out. So they don't ever go to a proper discard pile or anything. They're just kind of coming in as conjurations because you're going to be summoning them all Look the time. Look at my stack of conjurations compared to yours. Yeah, way different. Koji's got a... There's two stats here. If you look at Koji Wolf Cub, there are two stats that are meaningful for how you can play the game. One is their battlefield, and this is how many units you can have out at one time. Koji's the, the highest in the game at 10. So this is a big like swarm, tons of uh, things on the board, probably small things on the board deck. Uh, and then the spell board is three, which is one of the smallest, if not the smallest. I haven't seen the new Phoenix Born all their numbers yet. But that means I can only have three spells ready to cast out here. I don't think there's a two. I haven't seen one. Yeah. Uh, so that means I have minimal spells, but a lot of presence on the board. 
Uh, so we'll see how this plays. I've never played it before. Really. Hikaru asking, do you guys know of a core set has enough cards to play a three-player game? So I think technically it comes with like six decks and then enough dice for four people to actively be playing at the same time. It's a it's a really good core set. And the decks come pre-built and, and all. And you do get to choose your first five after seeing your opponent's Phoenix born. So... Very important. Uh, if Zach and I, once we get good enough, we'll kind of know, like, ah, oh, against Jeff's side, maybe I do this. Or... All right. So you roll all your all ten dice to start the game, and whoever has more of this basic symbol uh, is who gets the choice of who goes first. And the basic symbol is the worst symbol on the die. It doesn't really mean you can't do the things you want to do. It just means you have to spend a little more time to get them done by meditating. Yeah. So the the advantage goes to the player that basically starts with the worst dice. These dice roll nicely, man. I like it. It's a good feeling. Three. You. That's you. So, so choose who goes first. I want to go first next turn because I'm thinking that if I play my Sleeping Bear at the end, I'll get a free four damage maybe if I can clear a board. So um, I want you to go first. All right. Now, this is not normal. This is not how you play Ashes. But we're we should put that to... disclaimer ahead of all of our streams. Am I right? <laughs> Got uh, But we're going to play with hands up just so that hopefully we can kind of show the actual um, decision-making processes that are going on as you have a hand of cards and what's going to be going through our heads <coughs> as we try to figure out what to play. I'm a sexy dinosaur. <laughs> Do you know Zach, what? I had no idea. <laughs> I have something to reveal. Do you know what? <laughs> you know what? Week... Live my life as a sexy dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what week the upgrade pack is being shipped out? I'm mad. We don't even to know the month. The new content. We... January is when the upgrade pack is supposed to. It's supposed to be ship, January. But uh, no, we do not know the week. What we do know is that as soon as we uh, have it, uh, you'll be charged and it'll be on the way. There's no way to get it sooner. I can tell you that. No, no way. I mean, glad you're excited, dinosaur. Also glad you're sexy. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Do do do. Wait, um, did I just shuffle these back into my deck? No, they're in front of me. <laughs> All right, so what's the first play and why? So here's here's what I'm looking at. I have this Blood Archer in my hand, and he's a three attack, three life, two recover. He's also got a side action. Um, place a wound token on this unit to deal wound damage to a target unit. So he's really great to get on the board early because... If you don't play anything, I can technically sneak in damage. Yeah. Uh, but really, having that side action on on tap, you play something with one health, I can just immediately uh, get it off the board. Um, I also, ultimately, I need to know what you're doing. Hmm. So, as an example, my Undying Heart, whether or not uh, I'm going to play back a unit. Because like an ideal scenario would be like, play the Blood Archer, play the Undying Heart on it, use his side action to deal a damage to something, get to swing with him at something, You he gets defeated. Like, if you play something big, even if it can counter, I bounce him back to my hand, I get to put him back into play yeah. again, use his yeah. side action again. That's max value. I look at something like Living Doll. Um, she has a really good side action as well, which is move a wound token from this unit onto a Phoenix Born. Mm -hmm. So she has to, like, get damaged in some way, but that's kind of a later stage play for me. Like, if you play something threatening that can do, like, uh, two or three damage... She can block it. She can yeah, block she can it, yeah. It, yeah. Um, and then, of course, summon Blood Puppet. That I really don't want to give you the Blood Puppet too early. So well, let's look at the Blood Puppet really quick. This is a, a unit I can summon on your side of the board. At the end of the round, you basically... Your Phoenix Born takes a damage if this is in play. Uh, and there's a side action resource deal of damage to this unit. So you have to do that twice, mm -hmm. or you can actually block with this unit once it's summoned on your side. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I don't want to even let you know. I mean, I'm playing Jessa, so you have to. I have it. I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to really let you know. I also have blood transfer, uh, which lets me deal two damage to a unit I control. If I do, I can remove two damage from another unit I control, or remove a wound token from my Phoenix Born. So that's another like, I have a way to get damage on the Living Doll. And then et cetera, et cetera. But th those are kind of later stage. I think the way I play is I would get the Blood Archer in play. Because I, I also don't think you're going to have a one, like right now specifically, any way to just get him off the board immediately. Yeah, and if I don't do something, I'm assuming I just take three damage to Koji. Yeah. All right. Team is in. Thank you, friends. Appreciate you. Oh, man, I like the, the flourish there with the lime. It's no cherry. No, but it does make it seem like a significant thing is happening. It's Rafe and Robert, everybody. Let's give it up for the, the team here. 
soft clap. You guys really are good. great. Appreciate Thank it. You. What's this called? The white derby with a lime. White derby lime. Ooh. Excellent. The Still green the green derby. I have an idea for these. You want to do this? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a huge stack up here. Uh, so oh, a white derby with lime. Such a, more or less kind of a gin margarita at this point. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, to, Cheers all to all of you. Happy Wednesday. For making Ashes Happy Reborn happen. Happy 2020, yeah. Love, love we, it. Love it all. We made it. Uh, side note, tomorrow we're going to plant some of our holiday favorites. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that because that will be a very end of year festive uh, time. It would be nice asking for a close up on the drink. Look at this. Look at this pleasant beverage. I just am waiting to spill this, aren't I? Isn't that nice? How much did you pay for that? Where do you live? That we answer need, probably depends. We really on need to know <laughs> how much you'd pay, or how, where do you live? Uh, <laughs> both of those things together at the same time. Uh, I'm animated. Says Happy Wednesday. I love your content. Well, hey, happy to have you here. That's great. Oh, light sand looking. So it, it's actually yeah, really we're, tasty. We're living a, a a embarrassingly good life right now, given the circumstances. Honestly. The, this is my Wednesday afternoon. Is pretty magical. Yeah, that ashes is coming back, man. That's a miracle. So it's so awesome. Um, how about that for 2020? A little counterbalance on the scale. So I think you play Blood Archer first. Now, am I crazy in thinking that? The only thing, see, Koji doesn't it generally is going to be playing on the board more than doing a lot of direct damage. Now, if I had, let's say, um, however I was playing last time that had those earthquake spells mm -hmm. and was doing those direct damage spells. I would think, well, you know, if I play Blood Archer and, and I respond with a two dice nuke, then it's like I'm kind of winning that exchange yeah. and you've got very little value out of that unit. But with, against Koji, Battlefield 10, I think you can assume that I'm going to be playing a lot of little things and having Blood Archer out to just like threaten. Now, another really good time good. to play the Blood Archer is after you have a one health character out. That's true. You I can always play side play action. Side action. action. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another way to go about this, maybe a, a better option. Um, in looking at it would be like meditate to be capable of playing him mm -hmm. and then just play the summon blood puppet because it doesn't cost me anything. It's nice to sometimes just tread some water playing your spells. Now it gives your opponent information. They'll get it eventually a few turns later, but it can help you kind of like just delay the tempo of you committing. And mm -hmm. so much of Ashes is waiting as long as you can until you actually commit yeah. to your game plan. So I think I'm actually going to go that route. So I'm just going to meditate. Also, by the way, Scott Gilbert says $12. Doesn't say where he's from, though. I am sexy. I'm a sexy dinosaur. Says he paid 20 if Steven makes it. Oh, well, that's... Jeffrey Santos, $8 in California, but I'm also cheap. So $8 in Oklahoma is like... You're, you're paying for a nice cocktail. Unless you're at Andalini's, and then you're paying 20 <laughs> $8 in Oklahoma doesn't even get you a what was glass that? of wine. Oh, it was a Sazerac. Sazerac. It's like $23. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. Okay. So I can make seven Sazeracs in my house for $23. Let it, just let it be known. Another... <laughs> the bartenders had no idea what they were doing. All right. I think I'm going to meditate because I need... I kind of like this. It feels like I'm playing like an online card game right now. Yeah, sure. You know, we have your little hand down at the bottom. I'm just going to uh, me meditate ah. once. How about the... To take this to Goatville. Okay. So meditate is a side action. In, in the game, you get a main action, and then you get a side action. If both players pass their main action simultaneously, the round is over. Uh, so Zach's leading with a side action, one of the static side actions, and the most common one that you'll do is called meditate. Thank you for pulling that up, Brad. That's a good heads-up ball play there. Um, so you meditate, which means you can discard cards from your deck or from your hand or even from your spell board yep. to change dice up to a different face. Yeah, and so, so I Zach's went from the basic to the power symbol, which is the, the, the creature on each of these dice. And then I'll, my main action, I'll play Summon Blood Puppet. You'll see that uh, star burst looking navig. What do you, what, what, how would you describe that? Gym? Looks Arcane like a gym. Gym, Gymery. Uh, that's an action symbol. So I have to spin an action to put this card into play. All right. So main action is there. Now it goes over to me. I can take a side action and a main action. Um, my thinking about how this turn is going to play out is I want to try to sneak this Sleeping Baron at the very end, mm -hmm. which is a funny way to say, it's a funny thing to say. You, you just, can't sneak a sleeping bear anywhere most of the time, but. You just don't want me to know the sneaking bear's around until uh, the, sleep, the sneaking bear, the sleeping yeah. bear until the end of the turn. So I can't do anything about it. I've also got this hunt master. So if you look at this hunt master, it's a, it's a lot of dice to play. It's an ally that comes out. And when it comes into play, you place two status tokens on this unit and place a panther spirit onto your battlefield. And then it has a side action, remove a status, add one to the attack value of another target unit for the remainder of the turn. 
So usually I want to actually have a bit of a board built and the hunt master comes in. And then from that moment on, I can always take side action and start buffing my units. So having something that's a little bit scary out, not just the Panther Spirit, which is a 1-1, is a really good uh, consideration before playing here. This is also a pretty hefty unit. So again, if you have ways of dealing with units, it's a lot to come in on the board without knowing exactly what you're going to be doing. So instead, I might do something like uh, an Indigo Creeper, which is one that I actually want to, to play out and start to build. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to Again, just kind of waste some time here. I'm going to Indigo Creeper here. It's a main action in the top right of that card, so it cost me my main to put it in. And then I want to look at side actions based on what I have in my hand that I need to play. So, for instance, I know the Hunt Master requires a frog, and yep. I currently have none frogs. I know the Bear requires two leaves, so I've got those spoken for. I've got some music notes over on these. So I know that I'm pretty good on this. I've got main sides and then three of the class symbols. Really so, good, so those are good cool, dice. Man. So I'm probably going to just meditate two to drop both of these guys up to frogs. That also gives me a side action for the frog die, which can always do one damage, just like the goat can bring things back from the dead. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to meditate two. And you don't even look at them because <laughs> they don't matter. You don't think about the things you just lost because they could have gotten you closer to the things you wanted. Dysphoria says anything from a fiver to 20 quid, depending on alcohol content. Londonish. Right. Can't find the pound sign. Great. Love Hashtag. It. I'm just kidding. I know. It's beautiful. You know. Awesome. Northern Lights, the gingerbread cookies with blue cheese. Is that a thing? Now, that's something I've never heard about. And mulled wine. Delicious. Some cloves, some orange in there, All some right. mulling spices. Main action into the creeper. Meditate two off the top of the deck to switch two dice up to their highest side, which you always do the highest side, of course. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to play a blood transfer. That's a spell. Again, I'm not wanting to tell you what I have going on yet. You haven't really done anything to show. Hey, how dare you? To show me, and then I won't take a side action. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So... Did you throw the lime in? I did, yeah. I do that most of the time. So I've got an Indiglo Creeper that I could summon now that my spell is out. It's a 2-1, and it says, when it's destroyed, place a Luminous Seedling Conjuration onto your battlefield. Now, this is an interesting way that this Conjuration works. It's the cutest thing that it is you've, you've ever seen. Yeah. I'm looking at the actual unit now, the Conjuration Indiglo Creeper. So it's very cute. And the way that this works is kind of like a Pokemon vibe in that whenever this thing is destroyed, you place a Luminous Seedling, which is a different conjuration that comes in. It's a little bit stronger. It's it kind evolves. Of, it's kind of like the uh, Metapod of the uh, of the chain here. The Butterfree uh, chain? What's the what's the other one? Meta, Metapod and Kakuna? Is that right? Is it Kakuna? It's, no, it doesn't sound right, but it's Cocoon-based. I thought Kakuna is Venomoth, eventually. It's Metapod uh, is... Uh, Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, yeah? Yep. And then Weedle? Yep. Cocoon. Kakuna. Kuna. Isn't it Venomoth? Venomoth. Yeah. Is it Venomoth? I thought that came from Venonat. Uh, maybe it yeah. does. No, hold on. What's the third evolution there? Of what? It's the weird looking thing. Uh, Weedle. It's a buggy or one. Butterfree? No, that's the Caterpie one. Beedrill. Beedrill? Yeah, it's Beedrill. Yeah, Beedrill. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the idea. So it goes into a luminous seedling, and then it's just kind of sitting there, and then it becomes this big... Brilliant thorn, big old thorn dinosaur, and it's uh, it's going to do some work. So I, one of my things that I like to do is I like to get a creeper on the board. It's a two attack, and if it dies, I don't care yeah. because I get a luminous seedling, so I can at least threaten two damage. And Zach's got to play something to try to soak it. So I'm going to summon the indigo creeper as my main action. It's going to cost me a leaf and a music symbol. I got to play my magic leaf flute, and this will go to my uh, used pile. And then is it exhausted? Yes. Gotta mm. gotta use that spell. A little exhaustion symbol on that. All right. Side action, I don't have any. Remember, Koji's got a status side action that I can throw on things, but it's not gonna be useful here for the creeper. Cool. So now I'll enact my secret plan to save the world. Uh playing a blood archer. Now here we go. It's an action, a goat, a heart, and a basic. Goat, heart, and a basic. A basic can be any die. I on the need board. to remember. So I need one heart, two heart. Red heart, blue heart. Knife, knife, knife heart. Sounds like a cheat code. 
but I think I can spend either. I'm going to spend this. Um, now, he technically has a side action that I can do a wound or something. But I also have Undying Heart, which is a side action. Um, which is a good question. Because I, I do not think you'll be able to just deal with him. So I'll side action here. I'll do a wound there. And we'll see how... Play, place one wound. What are you doing it with? The, the wound blood damage. Archer? Oh, on this unit. So mm -hmm. that's a problem. To deal damage to me. Yeah. Basically. So yeah. I'm going to Undying Heart. Side action. I spend a heart to play it. And then if he's destroyed, he's actually going to bounce to my hand. Yeah. One thing that I like about that too is that because this creeper is at two attack... I could technically ping you for one as a side action, as a 3-3, three, three, uh -huh. and then swing with two. And, like, you really don't want to block that, so you end up taking two with Jessa. Now, you get to take three back to me, so I don't really like that exchange. But it's worth knowing that, you know, a, a two attack plus a, a frog die can take care of three, three life. All right, so you got the creeper there. And I really don't mind the creeper dying. But at this point, if I swing at Jessa or even at the Blood Archer and Jessa blocks then I'm going to lose that exchange. The Blood Archer is going to swing back at me. Now, if you do swing back at me, your ability gets turned off because it's not uh, unexhaustible. So it would take Bloodshot off the board, which is not a terrible thing to, uh, to, try, to, to try to do here. So let's think about our options. At this point, we're kind of at a stalemate. You have the option to kill this into Glow Creeper, which again is kind of not bad for me. I'm not worried about that. And then I can throw this Biter in, which can't attack, but it does have Unit Guard. So that's pretty fascinating. Or we throw the Huntmaster in here. Now that gets pretty interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna start. By throwing the Hunt Master in as my main action. It's going to cost me a frog and a little music note. And I'm going to take a basic from my nature pool. i got to make sure I'm not making a mistake there. Actually, I'm going to take a basic from my sympathy magic. So the Hunt Master is going to come in. And when it does, it places two status tokens on itself. And it also places a panther spirit. And this is going to put me way ahead on the on the just number of attacks that I can offer. So now I can take a side action, remove one of these, and buff the attack value. And I want to do that next turn. My, my point here is that I can buff the Indiglo Creeper, swing for three. If you block with a Blood Archer, I've got the side action to take it off the table, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't block it, it's a three damage attack, and there's really nothing that I'm losing in that exchange. So the Hunt Master is out, and i got to worry, can Zach take care of this unit with three damage somehow, somewhere? And then for my side action, I have two options. One, I can go ahead and use Koji's side action to put a third status token here and have three buffs on the round. Or I can wait, hopefully this Luminous Seedling comes out, and then I can start to evolve it faster with Koji. Yep. But like what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the side action to play Join the Hunt. It cost me one music note. It is a side action to get it into play. And then it's a side action, choose a target, and it gains group tactics. After you declare three or more attackers, it adds two to the attack value. I got to deal with it. So then all of a sudden, I can push forward with all three, do two, three, four across the various units. And it's a pretty threatening attack. Well, in that case, I'm going to side action with a Blood Archer to do a damage to your Panther. No! Don't want to give you the seedling. Do one to him as yep. well? Yep. Mm hmm. And then I'm going to actually swing with the Blood Archer mm, nice. at your Hunt Master. That's, that's, I like that. So once a round, your Phoenix Horn can block for a unit, so it could exhaust the block. So technically, Koji can jump in front of this. I could jump in front and protect my own units once per turn, or once per round, which is, which is pretty worth doing. The other thing I could do... Crash Rick asking, how would we say the out-of-the-box experience is for Ashes? I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I saw somebody talking about Coquito, I think is how it is. Evan, I actually had that this weekend. Really? Yeah, Brian made some. It was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. It was probably better than Eggnog for me. Huh. I want to try it. It's apparently it's Puerto Rican. Yep. 
And that's uh, your that's wife, my uh, wife hails from the PR. From Puerto Rico. So here's here's what I'm looking at. If I block this with Koji, I take three damage. Yep. Then I return the favor by buffing the Indigo Creeper and swinging for three, either on Jessa directly or on the Blood Archer. Uh, so it's an equal exchange. You have more life than me. Uh, and I don't lose a unit. And when I lose a unit, Jessa's ability triggers. So I'm going to block that with Koji. Take three. OK. And then I'm exhausted. OK. Koji taking one for the troops there. Back to me. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I think I might take. Now I've got to. I've got to be careful. You've got one card in hand, so I'm thinking just board wise. If I swing with both of these units, and Zach drops something threatening in, which you have six dice, so there's plenty to threaten here, then I don't have a way to block that because the only thing I can do is play a Sleeping Bear and it's exhausted, and then Summon Biter. I don't even have in play yet, so. That tells me that I need to hold the Hunt Master just in case things get weird for me. So I'm going to side action, mm -hmm. remove his status to add one here, and then I'm going to swing for three on Jessa on your Phoenixborn. And I will take it, of course. All right. Okay, that is me. Yes. All right. All right, all right, all right. So you see how, if, if anyone's played chess, I assume some of you watching have probably at least dabbled with the game of chess. Um, I myself doubt. I've been watching Queen's Gambit. It's great. Is You've it? Been watching it? I haven't seen it yet, but it's on my list. If you play chess, it's phenomenal. Like, it takes me back to so much of my early uh, addiction to that uh, world. But it's a, it's a great show. Um, and these exchanges are what you have to look at, right? So it's similar in it, when do you do the trades, when do you sacrifice... Um, what are you worried about? Is that going to put me in check, basically, by playing a unit that I can't do anything about? Those are the yeah. things you got to consider. Rob asking any word on Cosmic Token restocks. We're making those as fast as we can. Everything. So we'll have them as soon as we can. Hit those wait lists on the website. So here's what I'm looking at. I have this blood transfer, mm -hmm. which is deal two damage to a target unit. If I do, I can remove two wound tokens from another unit. Or I can remove a wound token from my Phoenix Born. Mm, nice. So I could deal two here mm -hmm. and heal the damage with Jessa, and the right. exchange is now favoring me. Mm -hmm. Or I can play Living Doll, which gives me a blocker with three health. And I can still come back to this in a minute. But that's going to give me a lot of tricks, because Living Doll can move a wound token from this unit onto a Phoenix Born. Yeah. So I could literally deal two here, move two to the Living Doll, and then move from the Living Doll over to you. Yeah. Right, as a side action. And here's So what I'm going to be looking at is... At what point does Zach use enough dice that you can't replay the Blood Archer? Yeah. And that's when it becomes really threatening. So if you play the Blood Transfer, and that burns a heart and a knife, and then I happen to kill this, you need a goat, heart, and a basic. So you burn a heart and a knight. I have to have goat, three heart, shot. basic. And you don't have the goat currently. Yeah. So at that point, I know that if you're going to play the Blood Archer again, you're basically out of dice for the turn. So if you do two here to heal, I probably frog that off the board. And then I say, well, it's Blood Archer or something else. And I'm not worried about the something else. It can't be worse than the Blood Archer at that yeah. point. So I'm going to get a Living Doll into play, which is a heart and a knife and an action. And then I'm going to go ahead and meditate one to take this basic up to a goat, just so I am threatening the Archer at all points. Yeah. Yeah. Super solid. Again, you're out of hand now. So I know everything that I'm dealing with currently. Yep. Which is quite nice. And and Zach's still got two unknowns. The goat can also technically get me an ally from my discard pile. So mm -hmm. I could, it could get me another living doll. Okay, so living doll is going to move wound tokens. So you really have to swing with enough to discard the living doll all at once. You can't just do one or two damage here and there. Yeah, it's not. Or it's just really bad for you. Not good for business. Okay, so this is where I think I think it's best for me to threaten. I'm going to bring this biter out, jump, and then that's going to at least delay the turn a little bit for me. I'm okay with where I am. You can't swing with a living doll. Um, you can still summon a blood puppet, which is 
is probably what we're about to see, or a blood transfer, um, which is again not not terrible. At that point, you can't recast the blood archer, so I would definitely frog it. So I'm going to hold the frog for that threat. Let's play the biter as my main action, which is the top right. You see, it's just cost a main action on that starburst. And then for side action, which is a little uh, diamond symbol, I'm going to do nothing. Pass my side action. I've got one secret card back here. So I'm going to do a blood transfer. I guess that's a side action. Yikes. Mm. It's funny. The main actions are, I guess, you're down to basically the blood puppet. Mm -hmm. Summon blood puppet was your last main action. Yeah. I'm going to do a blood transfer. So it exhausts. I'm going to deal two damage to my living doll. Mm. Is that right? Because you can side action off the table. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Not yet. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to know exactly. That's why keeping that Hunt Master up, I think keeping a threat up is really important. You haven't locked with Jesse yet either, so I, I can't threaten the Hunt Master attack Living Doll into the frog. Yeah, but if, if a frog does it, then I... I thought this was an action, so I could do it and her side action. Mm -hmm. But I can't. Ah, Nick, Nick was aware of that when mm -hmm. he was... Putting those together. But it is a good block. Like Living Doll's ready to block, basically. Yeah. It's, it's stopping the Hunt Master from doing anything. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually think what I like is side action goat for this other Living Doll I drew. Mm, yeah, nice. And I take a damage for that. So the goat works. And then pass. Mm -hmm. And I'm basically, uh, if you get rid of this somehow, I can obviously get him back into play. But I, I like the idea of being able to summon a blood puppet and also play a second living doll. Yeah. It's a really good board state for me. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. Just being able to block is really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you can't just like attack here and frog it. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm about to go into leading the turn on turn two. Um, so my game plan revolves around taking, you know, kind of trying to shift tempo at the start of that turn with an unexhausted Sigmi Bear doing four to that Blood Archer. Throwing that back into your hand before you get to use it, and then you got to waste all these dice to play it again. Um, so I'm going to summon a biter. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the frog until the very end in case I need it. So we're going to go here. Be careful. You need two leaves to play I that bear. I need two leaves. Thank you. Very, very good, uh, heads up ball play there. Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. I've got a, I need a leaf. So I'm going to side action first. I'm going to go ahead and, well, no, no, no. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, we'll just do leaf. Side action horsey. Where's the horse do? Is that the draw card one? Uh, I don't remember. I think I have biter. Do, 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 do. Uh, draw a card. You may choose a card in your hand and place it on the top or bottom of your deck. Nice. Uh, and then I will go ahead and meditate one. To bump this up to a frog. The biter's a problem. Yeah, he can't attack. Oh. Not so, as so don't much worry of a about problem. That. He's rooted, but he does have a three attack and unit guard, mm, mm -hmm. so it's pretty annoying um, for anything that uh, you might want to do offensively. Agreed. Hmm? Um. All right, I'll just take an action to play a living doll, mm -hmm. and then I'll pass to you. So now that the things that I have, I can essentially threaten Huntmaster into Blood Archer. Zach likely blocks that. 
But if he blocks that with Jessa, then I'm getting a free two damage and my board state doesn't change. Um, I could swing directly at Jessa and one of these living dolls blocks, and then I could knock it off with a with a frog. Um, but if I do either of those options, I don't get the bear in play. And I feel like the bear is really important. It is your whole plan. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove my threats here, play the sleeping bear, comes in with an exhaustion token on it. And then I'm gonna side action here to put a status token on the hunt master for more pumps at the start of the turn. So it's a five damage attack that's coming in at the start of next turn. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> then I'll do what I can do, which is summon a blood puppet. Mm -hmm. I have a gift for you. You've got so much room on this board. You can play five more blood puppets and Koji isn't even worried. It's still just a soak. Yeah, it is. And I'm going to take a wound, right? Yeah. So. For sure. Um, so is your main action? I'm my main action, and then I'll pass. Pass on your side. So then we're at the point now where there's not a lot of main actions on the table. Um, Huntmaster can still attack. A living doll can easily block one of those swings. And you really don't want to give them damage. You do not. And the blood puppet's sitting here, not a lot to do there. Um... So, I'm going to pass my main action. I will pass as well. Double pass means the end of the round. It may, it, before I do that, actually, it may be, if I swing Huntmaster on Blood Archer, there's not really a downside to that. Because then your side action to place a wound would kill the Blood Archer. Does this get another token somehow? Yeah, from Koji. Yeah. And there's not really a downside there. Because your Living Dolls can't block for your Blood Archer. So I'm going to take that back. Okay. That would have been what we would call a blunder. <laughs> Huntmaster on the Blood Archer. Uh, yeah, I'll take the two. Okay. Then I'll pass. All right. And then I will pass my main, which means we go to the end of the phase. A couple of things are going to happen. So Cursed one from the Blood Puppet. At the end of the round, place one wound on my Phoenix board. So that's a bummer. Also, Indiglow, at the end of the round, destroy this unit. And of course, when it's destroyed, a seedling comes into play. Here comes the seed. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> and then it has a main action. Remove two status tokens from this unit and destroy it to place up to two brilliant thorn conjurations on your battlefield, which I didn't realize it was two. That's amazing. And then inexhaustible, add one to its life value for each status token on the unit. Nice. And then we're going to unexhaust everything. And recover. Recover anything that needs recovering. I guess that's plus plus one is a pretty good three recover there. He's he's ready to party. <laughs> Let me roll dice. This passes to you. Goats. Snakes. It's creepy in this forest. Oh, I guess I should. So I got all these mid level symbols, which is not, not necessarily bad. Not bad, not good, yeah. Uh, and then at this point, you could discard any cards from your hand you didn't want, and then we'll draw back up. It's cool because you get to see your dice first, which can matter. Like right now, if I had revealed like a frog and Zach hadn't had any recover value on his units, I can threaten that first turn ping, and that might change the cards that I want to keep in my hand at the time. Okay. Interesting. We're probably going to have a big old board by the end of this. Terrifying. Well, my battlefield is only uh, four, so my board only gets a little bit wider. You just keep dropping blood puppets over here. Okay, so now... I will keep dropping blood puppets on you. Our cards. Invigorate, so I can take a side action to place one status token on up to three target units I control. We've got the Hunt Master, another one of those. We've got Lick Wounds. Remove two wounds and one exhaustion from a target unit or Phoenix Born. Wow. That's amazing. And then another Join the Hunt. So I can double up this Join the Hunt, and then I can use it twice, which is nice. And then the Temple Elder. Uh, when it comes into play, place a status token on this unit, and at the beginning of the player turns phase, place one on this unit. Then you can remove one to, do, to draw a card. So you can side action, remove a status, draw a card. Nice. So he's going to draw me some stuff. He's also just a 2-2-1, two, two, which is not bad. Yeah. 
Uh, I got redirect, so I can play it. If my Phoenix War would take damage, I can basically put that damage on a unit instead. Mm. I got two Blood so Shamans. Uh, when they're destroyed as a result of a spell ability or dice power I control, I can remove a wound token from my Phoenix Born to raise uh, one of my dice a level. Uh, I have Cut the Strings, which is a ready spellboard spell. I deal two damage to a unit I control. If I do, I can discard a target alteration spell. So if you have any alterations that you're putting down on things, I can get rid of them. And then I got another Summon Blood Puppet. Right on. So that's got a board with a lot of life. Josh says, look at that art, Trevor's saying. There should be rules against games looking this nice. Yeah, 100%. I have what? What did you say? So you have a lot of life. Yeah. So if you didn't, a really good play here is like swinging with the bear, hunt master, and luminous seedling, giving the seedling a join the hunt, which is hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, so giving it two attack. So then you know it's you've got essentially four, eight attack coming in. And if these were all like two health or less, then you, anything you block with it gets blown up. But yeah. because you're three, you can soak on the living doll, soak on the living doll, sleeping bear can go to the blood archer, order Jessa, and you're in such good shape to cause me harm. Yeah. Uh, so I don't I don't want to do that at all. <laughs> I want none of it. I don't want harm. So the other priority here, I I really do want to use that bear while I can. Before things go wrong. Before things go wrong, yeah. And I can buff it to five, and a five attack in this game is about as good as it gets. It is. So I know that I can also like use the side action on Koji to put up a status here. Then next turn I can lick wounds, remove two damage, and remove the exhaustion from Koji, and then side action put another one and evolve that luminous seedling too which is a pretty nice bonus. Okay. So threats, threats abound. I think you probably take an opportunity to take a five whack at that Blood Archer or at Jessa directly. If I go at Jessa, it burns a living doll. More, most likely, um, which is not a bad exchange. If I go up Blood Archer, I think you just take it back in hand and probably replay it later on, which is not a terrible exchange for you. But I really do want to get some amount of action on the board now. If I take this Blood Archer off the board, your offensive power is zero. Um, so I'm not really worried about that. So let's do that. So I'm going to remove a status with Huntmaster on the side. Actually, I'm not even going to do that because I really want to get Koji going. I'm just going to use the Sleeping Bear to swing for the Blood Archer. And then you can step in with Jessa or not as you like. Uh, I'll just counter. Okay. So I'll take four, you'll take three. That's it. And then Undying Heart triggers, so Blood Archer goes back to my hand. And then your bear is... Bear is perfect. Now, I know that I'm in a great spot here if this bear survives. Because it's Lick Wounds, remove two, remove the exhaustion, and that is a huge shift for me if Zach doesn't take it off the board now. He knows that I probably have this card in my deck because it is Koji's signature. You see on Lick Wounds, it's got Koji's face. Every every uh, signature card, there's usually one, I think only one per Phoenix Born. And usually. only that Phoenix Born can run the card. So Lick Wounds is what you should look out for with Koji. You should know that this is definitely something that uh, is going to be happening. Yeah. Then I'm going to side action, exhaust, put a status here. That's going to give me a little more protection. I'm going to have three life now. And then I'm one status away from being able to uh, evolve my seedling, which means my Invigorate will get it done as a side action. All right, I am going to play Blood Archer with a goat, a heart, and a basic. Mm -hmm. And then I will use his side action to deal a damage to the bear. Deal one to you, deal one to the bear. Yeah. And that's pretty good. I think that's a nice, that kind of, that, I think that's about even basically taking an action you now spend three dice to get that same unit back on the board but you take my bear off the board which cost me two dice it's like 
Yeah. That's about right. That's about where it needs to be. Okay. Now, what I really like here is the ability to side action invigorate. It's going to place status tokens on up to three target units I control. Now then I can main action to go ahead and evolve this into two biters. Or I can leave the status tokens there and do a different main action like swinging with the hunt master. Mutton chop, the wingspan expansion, you'll get tracking. Uh, it got a little bit delayed and we're, we're trying to do everything we can to get that out ASAP. And I'd also like to get more things that can take... If I'm placing three units with status tokens, I would love to have more status tokens to give out. I could do one and one, but I really want a third unit to get max value. Mm, I see. Okay. So... I think we're going to put a Temple Elder in. If I look at my board, I've got one sympathy die that needs here for the creeper. And then everything else is one sympathy to draw. Everything else is basically I can use leaves or basics across the board. Um, so join the hunt's also a sympathy. So if I evolve this now, I've got three units. I can threaten to join the hunt. And that's going to be what? Because these Brilliant Thorns are three attack, that's a really problematic swing for Zach there. Sure is. Aaron Clark, uh, still expected in January. We don't have an early or late. Well, we don't know. It's just January. It's when the upgrade kit's coming out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go with this plan. And it's not ideal. Cool. But it's interesting. Side action. I'm going to spin a leaf. And then we're going to do status tokens up to three different units I control. So one here, one here, and um, the hunt master is so good. One there, <laughs> yeah, right. And then I'll take a main action to blossom, remove two status tokens, and destroy it. Place up to two brilliant thorns on the battlefield. Yikes! And these things go away at the end of the round. But it's a good round. But what I like about this is that right now what I'm threatening is group tactic or join the hunt to pump hunt master to four. And then swinging with everything means that I'm doing four, three, three. So living dolls can't block for free. Blood archer can't block for free. So that's a huge attack that I'm threatening by dropping those thorns out. Now, of course, that probably has an answer. Uh huh. But for one die, you can't hate it. Much answers. It's not good. Did you put a status token on that? I did. <laughs> For walls? Just to, just, just to let you know I'm in control of this blood puppet. Mm -hmm. So I think... I think I'm playing a Blood Shaman just for a block. Nice. That's a good situation to. So I'm going to play Blood Shaman. And uh, he, his ability is basically blank. Okay. But he's just a character. <laughs> he's just a body. <laughs> uh, then side action, I guess. I might as well Blood Archer. Mm hmm. So, yeah, if you think he's going anyway. I mean, I potentially don't. I don't not think that. Do you want the blood puppet here? I don't think that's what I'll be doing. I appreciate the idea, though. I'm an ideas guy. Yeah, <laughs> I see that. Um, I'll do one. Let's do one of the hunt master. Yeah. At least make it think I'm going to do something to it. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna enact the plan here. Um, let's side action on join the hunt. And now the unfortunate thing is this hunt master with three status tokens is gonna do basically gonna die, uh, likely. And we'll see if you make that decision, but I think that's the right decision. So group tactics two. Um, we might not even need what that. What up, John the Bard? So 
everything on the board currently. No, yeah, I gotta I gotta get plus two here so that you can't living doll and soak one of these attacks. So join the hunt. We'll get plus two to the hunt master, so it's four. And then we will swing. With all three. Mm -hmm. So four damage, three and three. So I think. What's up, John the Bard? Zach just said hi to you. I'll say hi to you as well. Off work early. Hey, that's a good Wednesday. Congratulations. That's nice. All right, what's going through your head? I just want to stop all the damage. So these are going to go away, which is fine. So uh, yeah, at the end of the round, they'll go away. So if I trade my units for that, you're it, it's fine. Um, you have a bunch of dice left, though. That's terrifying. Um, there's a world where I keep my Blood Archer. Mm -hmm. But you can block with all sorts of stuff. So attacking is not really what my deck does. Yeah, because I can block with your own Blood Puppet. Mm-hmm. So there's this reality, which is like I take three. Then I can literally blood transfer, do two here, heal two here. Mm. And then start living dolling. And start down that path. Start dolling. Because you don't have anything currently showing. Have you taken your side action this turn? You did. Yeah, that side action joined the hunt. So you and can't frog your, me. Your ability too is spend one, do a damage when units die, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you can do two here also with this exchange. Yeah. So I think I block here. And then I'm um, ultimately I need one and one. John, just catching you up too here. We're doing a hands up game, just to kind of help show some of the decision making going on in Ashes, because um, there's there's a lot more than you think when you first hit this one up. Yeah, so I'll block here. Okay. So then we'll resolve the combat. You get to choose the order. So four there. You could counter with zero. It doesn't much matter. Got me. So I'll exhaust to do that. Do you want to trigger Justice ability? Yeah. I'll trigger one to do one damage to you. Right. So I take one, change four dice to a five, or four damage to a five. All right, resolve this combat here. Three to you. Counter with zero back yep. if you want. But I'll course, do one. It doesn't matter. I think it's, or it's once per turn. turn once per turn, yeah. And then Brilliant Thorn, because there's no blockers left, is going to do three to Jessa. So I'm up to seven. Yeah. So everything exhausts there. Now, when you block for your Phoenix Born, whichever unit can block for Phoenix Born, you have to block one unit with one unit. So you, you've got to assign units as the defender to who you're blocking. And that's my main action, so I'll pass it over to you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and blood transfer. Cost me two. Uh, and actually, I'm going to change your basics. That that's fine. Yeah. John, I'm playing um, Koji. Koji Wolf Cub. Um, technically, this is what would happen. Sure. Uh, so then I do two damage here. They heal two damage here. Nice. And that's my side action. And then as a main action, I'm going to go ahead and give you another friend. Friend mm -hmm. of the show. Thank you. Blood Puppet. I just keep stacking them up. Yep. Stacking them deep, selling them cheap. Okay. I'll just keep these guys back here. Yeah. Shaman only does stuff when he dies if I control it. To your stuff? Yeah. Okay. Koji was in an expansion previously, Brindover. Move one wound token from this unit onto a target Phoenix Born. Wow. It's, wow. It's just dark magic. It's disgusting. Is it secrets only the Sith knew? <laughs> Somehow Palpatine has returned. Dark magic. Secrets only the <laughs> Sith knew. Okay. <laughs> and we're back to the sequels, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. <laughs> you got me. Wait till you see the movie. Mm -hmm. I never will, man. So if I'm looking at my long turn here, I really want... probably to summon a creeper, as you do. 
I'm a creeper. Um, <laughs> Who printed 10 as a stat? Nick? Battlefield 10? What is this? And then I want to... Vrivis has this an important question really quick. to seed moments. Want to come <laughs> Do we want to go? I wouldn't mind. I don't know what it costs, but... Your soul. <laughs> Your soul. Everything. I've seen those influencers. Yeah. Worthless. So yeah, so I'm going to start by summoning an Indiglo Creeper. Um, uh, keep the heat coming Yeah, here. you just got to keep that train rolling. Um, that's going to exhaust there. And then it's just going to threaten an attack. It's got... Uh, Huntmaster can't do anything because it's it's got these this exhaustion token on it. So that's a bummer. I'm just sitting here with three. Um, but I do know that I have Lick Wounds to, to get the Huntmaster healed up and unexhausted. So then I can... Push the creeper to three and start swinging. So, like, I've got some good board shenanigans. And then my side action. Let's see if there's anything I'm going to need later. I am going to go ahead and uh, do one to get a frog. Mm -hmm. That puts my Huntmaster online here, but it also threatens killing the Living Doll if you don't use it for some reason. Another Huntmaster? Gross. I'm going to see the bathroom. And I'm going to say hi to our friends. John the Bard, I agree. Ashes makes for a really, really, really pretty uh, game state. Uh, these card, The design of these cards is fantastic. Uh, the way they look, the template and stuff, it is a very pretty board. Also, it makes the color pop, for sure. How's everyone doing out there on this Wednesday afternoon in Tulsa, Oklahoma? John the Bard, Bard saying that Lick Wounds art, though. Yeah. Let me look at it. Yep. Yeah. It's good. I like Koji. I like it a lot. Northern says the board state looks like Steven is ahead at the moment. Is it so? Um, so it's really interesting. He's he's got eleven health to my twelve, so I'm one health ahead. Um, he has a bunch of stuff out, but like these uh brilliant thorns are gonna go away at the end of the round. Uh, so, and he's got two blood puppets on the board that he either has to, you know, spend four side actions and four dice to get rid of, or he's going to keep taking that damage. Jess's whole thing is basically don't lose and slowly ping them every time your units go away. Like you block, you do one of them, you block, you do one. So there are these weird scenarios at the end of a game with Jessa where your opponent has three or four health and they can't really swing into you to win, uh, because you can just block do one, block, do one, block, do one. And so as long as you can keep that up, uh, it's really tough for them to finish the game. You know, I'm saying uh, doing good here in Ireland on this Wednesday evening. I went to Ireland a couple years ago. It was really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Dysphoria, yeah, the bear did swing, but I blocked with it. Brandover, best advice for winning? Don't lose. Great advice. My turn. Mm -hmm. Side action. I'm going to move a damage from the Living Doll over to Koji. I got you. Because mm. I had the token in my hand. Main action, we're going to go ahead and focus this uh, Summon Blood Puppet to give mm. you a preview of what's to come. Mm -mm. Dark magic. Secrets only the Sith knew. I'm going to follow your footsteps yeah, here. You can think about your life. At Cliff Bar. It's like, yeah, I need some water at Cliff Bar. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. Don't think too much about anything. Hmm. You need a victory. <laughs> I really feel like in this matchup, healing Koji with these lick wounds is going to be really important. Because it's just a race against Jessa doing direct damage. But the other thing I've got to look at here is like, if I heal and unexhaust the Huntmaster as a side action, I can throw a Creeper for three, and there's no good block. So that probably means Jessa takes three. 
then I can actually, as weird as it is, I can swing with the Blood Puppet at one attack. The other weird thing that I can do is I can play Join the Hunt, a double, and then swing with all three of these at plus two. But one at a time, honestly, with the Hunt Master's ability is probably the best bet here. So if I just imagine that plan, if I can get the Hunt Master unexhausted, so let's just imagine this. So two basics, so basically anything here. Then if I play a Temple Elder, I can attack again at three. And then, so if I do like this, if I play another Hunt Master, I can attack again at three. So I think that's really going to be, I think that's really going to be the key. Yeah, Northern Lights, it, it's a normal game. It does take about 30 minutes. Um, but this is, we're going as deep in the explanation as possible, for sure. So that's my plan, is I'm going to basically, it's kind of a unit factory for me. So I'm going to get this Huntmaster unexhausted with Lick Wounds, and then I'm going to use the status token to swing. Then I'm going to play a Temple Elder. Then I'll use the status token to swing for three. Then I'll play the Huntmaster as the final. Then I'll use it to swing for three from this hunt master. Then I'll use this hunt master to swing this one for three. And so it's going to be a disaster. What's up, Brandy? Everybody asks about the, how this compares to Magic the Gathering. It's really not, it's really not a fair comparison, to be honest. Um, usually that comparison is relevant because most games are Magic the Gathering clones of a kind. Um, they're trying to improve on something, but the general basic idea is that you play things on the board, you build resources and you play a bunch of units over time. This is much more, you start out with a, a great, with all of your magic and all of your resources in play, you never build resources over the course of the game. And it's about exchanges and tactics and your first five and your deck building and all of that. So just stick around and take a look. It's way cheaper than magic, that's for sure. Uh, about 30 bucks every three months to stay current. I've got a great plan. I thought about it. So... We're going to do a side action, mm -hmm. Lick Wounds. It's got this little bridge, so it can be either, yeah? Mm -hmm. I did that right. I'm going to remove two wounds and an exhaustion from this Hunt Master. Seems good. And then for my main action, I'm going to play this Temple Elder. Comes into play, put a status token on. And then I can take a side action and a music die to draw a card. I'm currently at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight battlefield. So if you keep those puppets coming, it's gonna get really nasty. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Where'd all your dice go? <laughs> I spent them. Anybody got big holiday plans? It's a weird one, right? We're keeping it pretty tiny at our at our house. That is gonna be weird. Talked about zooming. It's just gonna be me and my folks. Side action. Quit. You and your folks are the holiday party? Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> um, main action. Randy, this would be a great game to play with your son. Let's spin this. Exhaust and give you another friend of the show. Blood Puppet. Gross. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to side action the Hunt Master. We get plus one to the Creeper. And we're going to swing at Jessa for three. It's a good number. It's a great number. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I find myself into like the perfect counter yet again. Or perhaps the game is just balanced. Very cute, though. You gotta, you gotta. I'll take it. You gotta admit, it is cute. So cute. And I've got no side action that, that I care care about. This guy is totally dead in this matchup. Mm -hmm. What am I blocking? No. <laughs> I mean, he is stopping the blood archer from going. That's true. That's but, true. Yeah. You know. Hmm. Yeah, Randy, sounds good. ACN, when these things hit the mail, it's expected in January. We don't know any specifics past that. Good to hear that, Thomas, hanging out with the folks. I want to play Cut the Strings. What's that do? Uh, action, exhaust. Knife and a basic deal two damage to a unit I control. If I do, I can discard an alteration spell. You're not going to do that, though, are you? No, I'm just using the action. Yeah. Very good art. Really good. Really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got some bokeh there. Then I'll side action with the Blood Archer. We'll do a damage to the Temple Elder. Okay. Clock's running. Main action or side action, Hunt Master gonna buff the Temple Elder. Mm -hmm. Swing for three on Jessa. Classic. And she's getting the reps in today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, ACM. Let's... We're as stoked as anyone. Block with a Blood Archer. Mm -hmm. Counter. Okay. I'll spend one to do one to your Phoenix Born. Swing at each other. Heal each other. And, and give then, you a uh, parting gift. Thank you. I take a damage. And then uh, mine, I will pass. Okay. Main action, the Hunt Master. Mm-hmm. Now they're ferocious together. <laughs> I know, right? Side action, uh, we'll pass. I'll pass. Okay. Side action here. Well, we'll do that. I guess it's smarter. Side action here, swing for three on Jessa. Mm -hmm. Not good. Um, a lot. Here's, here's something worth noting. So... If you don't block, then I can't swing for two with this Hunt Master. If That's you block true. here, then I do two. Yeah, I'll take yeah. three. Okay. I'll take it. I see. It just depends on how important the Living Doll is. I mean, it's better to have it out than not. Yeah. So then... I can try to swing for two, and that's not going to do anything because, because this unit's exhausted. I don't get the ability anymore. Uh, so I've got to hold tight there. That's me. Okay. End of the round. You're going to take three. End of the round. The take three. Ah. That's a mounting problem. Yep. Does not. It's just a space race now, <laughs> Elon. Literally. This Literally. passes back to me. Brilliant thorns go away. That's got to, yeah, there are cards that could clear the board here. Creeper becomes a luminous ceiling. There's tons of cards. Whether or not I have them, that's a different question. We just so happen to not have them in these decks in particular. Mm. Fine. I don't want this extra copy of Join the Hunt. As much as it's funny to swing with three blood puppets and give one of them plus two... I think I'd rather have a lot of other cards here. So I guess I, I roll my dice first, and then I can make that decision, but it's not really based on my dice. And I'm going to draw five. Is that our second turn? Uh-huh. I started with that sleeping bear yeah. that turn. That was insane. Yeah. That's incredible. All right, here is what I will do. I'm basically just um, st not stalling, but like 
I have a plan. So I'm going to play the Blood Shaman. Oh, Panther Spirit. Sorry. I'm supposed to put that in there. Oh! I still don't want to swing, though. When does that happen? Hmm. So whenever I play that last Hunt Master, the Panther Spirit comes in. Did I have... I had my Archer out then, right? So instead of doing one to the thing, I would have done it to the Panther. Well, I just don't think it changes anything. Because I can't swing like this, because then you put two on your Living Doll or one on your Living Doll, which just means more damage for me. You block here with a Living Doll, you take one, Living Doll transfers one over, and then Panther Spirit goes away at the end of the round. So, it doesn't matter. Same exchange on my end. Uh, playing Blood Shaman, and then I'm going to meditate. One, two. I need a snake. And I think I need a goat. Yeah. And then... It's your turn. And I'm five away from death. And you've got it in spades. In various, uh, in various ways. Uh, oh, hands. Yeah, this is not when you want to see two sleeping bears, <laughs> I can tell you that. It's like, curse you sleeping bear! I actually think... Quit sleeping! If you're going to start with sleeping bear in your open hand, you probably don't run anything in your deck. I think it's just one. Just one. Yeah, it's just one. Okay. So, right off the bat, I, I kind of want to do a quick assessment of what do I need, right? So, leaf, leaf, music, two nature, one music, bunch of nature over here. So, musics are basically free to spend here, as are the natures. So, I'm going to side action, exhaust, place a status token on the seedling. That's so good. We're going to threaten the same thing. Then we're going to do main action, lick wounds, remove two. 11 becomes nine. Remove the exhaustion. I got to spend two dice for that. Seems good. It's a, That's an or statement, right? Isn't that what they look like? Like that's an or? Yep. Okay. Makes me think it's both, but... All right. Mine? Mm-hmm. Chris Shorter, it's so good. Having the actual cards and the dice, amazing. Evan, that's exactly right. It looks like, you know, mid-summer next year, we're going to be in okay shape, maybe? We'll see what the uptake is. Um, let's go ahead and summon a blood puppet. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, friend of the show. What's notable for Zach here is he summons Blood Puppet. That forces me next time to side action here and pop it, or else. You got problems. I got problems. Now, if you do the next Blood Puppet, you're at five. I'm at four. I lose one and gain two, so I still can fill that board. But it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Uh, then I'll go ahead and meditate again. Realizing that I need a knife. I'm going to go ahead and go to goat. And we'll do another one to a goat. Give myself options here. Mm -hmm. um, got to have those goat options. Yeah. Got to have the goats. All right. <laughs> uh, then that's it. Yeah. Uh, So, <laughs> I need some frogs here. Because these hunt masters can't attack into a living doll without a frog side action threat to take it off the table. Because if I give Zach two damage on a living doll, that's a side action one. And then if I don't do it, it's a side action one again. And I'm already planning to take four at the end of this round. So I'm at what? what's eight plus five? Thirteen? This is where they have two health. Mm-hmm. I can't get rid of these guys. Yeah. It it's that that decision was made a long time ago. <laughs> these blood puppets are here forever. I have to kill you faster than these blood puppets are killing me. I like that. I like you know these, what I mean. I like I mean, these odds. You can't waste this time. I mean, two dice to get rid of a single damage blood puppet. Come on. It's a mounting. 
Mountain Nephew. It's a problem. It's a problem. So the question you ask yourself. You go ahead and pop those thorns, which is kind of dangerous. Or do you side action up to a frog and then swing for two? <laughs> or you just... Um, Jeff is such a weird neck. You just do... You just do you you do the work here. I'm gonna do the work. So we're gonna hunt master here on this one, uh -huh. and we're gonna swing for three. A lot of ways this could go wrong. Block with shaman. All right. Do a damage to you. No. This is the Jess away. Okay. Mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and blood transfer. Do two here. Heal one from Jessa. Mm-hmm. As a side action. And then main action. I'm gonna give you another friend of the show. The puppet. That's nice for me because it does unlock the old uh, hunt master swing. So now I'm gonna swing for two at Jessa. I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll allow it. Which half of my deck would you like me to beat? <laughs> Koji will side action, add a status dug in here. Okay. Mine? Yeah. Side action, put a damage on the Phoenix one. Mm -hmm. Main action. Play another blood transfer. Mm -hmm. So the game right now is basically I'm at eleven and I'm losing on blood puppets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zach's at fourteen. So if I can do five damage before the end of the turn, that's essentially what my clock looks like. Mister, yeah, I, I missed the trigger. I, I realized What'd you it miss? later. Uh, final cry. When a unit leaves play, I can do two damage to you. Oh, do that. You should absolutely. Well, my my living doll's gonna either go or be a problem for you. It's if fine. it matters, yeah. it's fine. Because I have another blood transfer, so I can literally once this is clear, put two more on it. It's like if you get mm -hmm. rid of it, I have two damage to wait in. It's really okay for me. Yeah, I might not have to wait. I think my best turn looks like get a creeper in. It's a music and a leaf. Then pop this to put two in. And then that third turn swing with plus two or join the hunt. And then at the last second, I can do a surprise double into glow, put another one into play, and do the last two damage depending on how the blocks go. But I do think that's my best. Like, what's the best on the board right now? So, let's put a creeper in. Hmm. <laughs> Here's your problem. And then, I have to start killing. I have to kill one of these. So, let's see if we side action there. Side action, main action. Side action, main. And then we've still got a second creeper. We've seen a music note on a leaf. Okay. So then we'll indigo creeper for main, and then we'll side action one damage here. And I haven't quite done the math. I don't know if I have five health left with your. You've already triggered that for the turn that. Lose, pl leave, play, do a damage. I get once per turn, not round. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Every time you unit leaves. Mm -hmm. So play Creeper, do one there. Mm 
So you can get two biters at some point. Or not two biters, two whatever the mm -hmm. thing is. Which the, is a three? The thorns, yeah, the two threes. So I got to have some heat here. Yeah, side action do a damage to you. <laughs> Main action. Food classic. I'll just pass. Okay. So then we'll do side action, kill the blood puppet. You want to trigger your ability? Mm -hmm. Pay one, do one. You're welcome. Thanks. And then we'll do main action, destroy this. Destroy it first, then you place. So my battlefield would be available. Mm -hmm. Keep your blood puppets out of here. We'll keep the things that matter over here next to each other. Mine? Yeah, pass back to you. And you know that the next thing is pump two here, swing for essentially in. You have to block something with Living Doll, maybe. It depends on what you get. Nevertheless, the deck building for Ashes is wide open. You can run any dice you want, any schools of magic you want. Uh, the only you you don't even have to run your signature card. It just it, your signature card just means it's only you. Whatever Phoenixborn you choose has one signature card, and only that Phoenixborn can run that card. Otherwise, you can run literally anything in the entire card pool. It's unbelievable. There's no factions, no nothing like that. Meditate twice, then I'll pass. Mm -hmm. All right, initiate plan action. Side action, join the hunt. Uh, give group tactics to Indigo Creeper. So plus two, three, and three, swinging at Jessa. Great. I have a plan. Yep. Um, I'll block. This is a four. Mm -hmm. I'll technically block here. Yeah. You get to choose the order these resolve in, though. Sure. So you start. Um, let's see, does it matter, you think? You'll see my ultimate plan to save the world, and it's great. All right, well, let's swing at Jessa. For three? Happens. Yeah. So I'm going to play Redirect. Mm-hmm. To do the three here. Oh, nice. When this leaves play, I'll play this to do two damage, and I'll mm -hmm. trigger my ability to do a third damage. Ah, oh, and that's the game. Knocked them from downtown. That's the game. <laughs> and if it's not, that's dead Jessa right yeah. there. That's I, amazing. That's I, super close. I knew I needed to get you to three, mm -hmm. and I had in hand no way out. The redirect is the that sells that game right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Man, Jessa is a wild, wild cat. That's so cool. Like that literally the last action, one of us wins. Absolutely. On that final action. <laughs> and then you had these uh distractions. <laughs> wow. Oh, good stuff. Man, that was uh really good. Two reactions? Wait, you can't play two reactions? Is that true? Is that in the framework? I think that's a new rule. One reaction per turn. Oh, and you just got dead. I don't know. I, I really don't care. I feel like that was an awesome game. Freaking beautiful. So if that's the case, then technically I just have to play that earlier. Yeah. That goat card. You don't try to stack it up. But even in that case, so you do, you get me to one, and then you take... Well, I just redirect and trigger Jessa. You don't, yeah, because you don't even you can block the creeper with living doll, I guess, or you can redirect to living doll. But if you redirect to living doll, then you take four from the creeper, yeah. Well, as long as I, I couldn't take any of these attacks. Really, I can take one of these two. Yeah. Um, but as long as I can redirect, I can still trigger Jessa. Mm -hmm. So if I have it at one, there's no way out. Right. If I have a unit on the board. Jessa's like Katsu or Ninja at the very end of Flesh and Blood. It's just like, well, you're on one, yeah. Yeah, it was a rule in 1.0. I never knew that, Chris. So yeah, so one reaction per turn. That's actually really, I'm glad. That definitely keeps it from being uh, yeah. degenerate. I'm glad to know that. All right, 2020, you want to try one more pair? Yeah, sure, let's do another pair. And that, honestly, hands up is so awesome and exhausting. We can't do that twice. <laughs> we, we've got to. We've got to just play a normal. Yeah, a normal I'm game. I'm with you. That was so tiring. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys actually got some um, got some use out of that. Useful.
it's cool that you see how the game unfolds and it comes down to the literally the final action where somebody uh somebody's gonna win you want to hand me that koji deck when you're done i'm stacking all the stuff we've used in the same pile is jesse even Jess is not even a reaction no that's it? just a ability so that you can use it on the same turn you're playing a reaction i would presume yeah so you it, didn't do anything weird there what was well the, oh. it was the redirect and the other card i played for two damage oh the final cry yeah oh i got you yeah okay okay yeah that that actually explains it for me thomas says very helpful thanks Good, good, good. Yeah. GT Lime saying very helpful. I swear, like, you come into this game and you're like, oh, look at this beautiful art and it's super fun. And that's one of the great things about it. But then if you want to go into it, it's it's thrilling. It runs deep. It's thrilling what happens with this one. I'm animated, says it was very resourceful. It really made me think over the moves. Matthew, wow, usually blow up his clog up the field. Yeah, it was weird that you actually just stack five up because Koji's got all the room. All the room in Casterly Rock. Yeah, he was prepared for that moment. Uh, who's your Who's your last? I'm gonna go with that. You guys have any uh, any requests out there? The, the things that I would really like to play are probably. Haven't we already played some Bali? I feel like I've I've said this name a lot. The classic Aridel. Well, we haven't played anything at sealed. I don't like Rin. Truest sense. I like Rin Northfell. I'd like to try out Echo or especially Astria. She looks really A lot of people cool. were saying Echo on um, our on chat. Community? On community? On chat? Okay. I'm not Echo. on text. Hold on. Let's see what the chat says here. Namine, Aridel, Namine, Simbali, Astria. Astria. Echo. We're on two and two here. Astria. All right, Astria. I saw three for Astria, and it's kind of what I wanted to play anyway, so. How do you not love the art for this card? You do. That's everything you want, right? Reminds me of when I was studying Hinduism. You just straight up do love all Just like, oh, man, I love this iconic Is Odette straight art. up all divine? I don't see anything in her deck that's mm. not divine. Get out of here. Does yours have divine? Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. I got these pretty dice. Oh man, you, this is your first time playing new Odette? No, no debt. No debt. No debt. Right. That's the way I want to live my life. Right. Not always that easy, but it is not. Not right now. Easy. My gosh. Houses are just a waste of time. Yep, Odette is ten divine. Good. Hmm. Huh. Okay. What's oh, we're, dude? We're gonna have a divine off. Do you have divine? Mm-hmm. A divine uh, charm. That's so cool. That's exactly what I want. You're gonna need those. Look at how much better these look. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I have more divine dice. Yeah. I was like, man, I can't run, but then I realized I have way more. It's set up. Right, she's got a spell board of four on Astria here and three ready spells right off the bat, so that's kind of where I'm thinking. She's got ninjas and devotion and Neil. Gosh, this this reminds me of like um Sky Tear. It reminds me of the Nupton faction. What is this steadfast guardian? A great card. Oh my gosh. Yes, it is a great card. <laughs> How beautiful is it? Bryce, can you pull up Steadfast Guardian? The, this card is out of control. The uh, the art. The thing that blows me away is I don't understand how Plaid Hat is the company that figured out how to make cards not be so stupidly templated. It's just art, man. It's visuals first. But everybody, even Flesh and Blood, is like got you know it's got the standard templates and ashes is rolling in like hey you know you guys want to see the full art and have it like go over the templating and go over the text box and nobody cares and it looks great all the time northern lights tomorrow we're doing some holiday favorites of ours some lighter board games uh 1v1 games those kinds of things that uh you could take 
if you were in a traditional holiday season, uh, you could take to family gatherings. Uh, if you happen to still be doing that, it might be some good suggestions for you. Um, we're going to play Swords of Strongholds tomorrow. Can't tell you how excited. And for all our Ashes friends that joined us randomly a couple of months back, <laughs> thousands of people randomly, uh, Crokinole's on the list. Mm. I have the board in my office right Hello. now. Uh, someone was saying earlier they thought I would love Brennan. I do. Yeah, um, I it's, a... it's classic Kylo vibe, just like a you know, disheveled and youth. It's also burn. Angry at the Let's world see. for various things that probably it's don't have any relevance. Man. Yeah. That's a very angry youth. The street youth. Yeah, you were you were pretty yeah. You were skateboarding I, around town did, with I a chip on your angst, shoulder. Though, you, know? <laughs> you did have angst. That's right. I couldn't be what I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Mainly I couldn't play games like I wanted to. That's right. There's some I could. You, you could None of the you none of the that. scary ones. You could throw that needle. Wizards or dragons? Out of here. Out of here. Even though our mascot was a dragon. Well, that was the old, that was the old, uh, you know, that kind of stuff is evil and your kids are going to yeah. you know, become Satanists or whatever. So I'll get it. I guess, I guess that proved not to be true. I mean, to be determined, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you know what card is amazing looking? It's Shield Mage. Just look at this card. Oh, I, every time. Look at look at these two together. If, also, you're, if you're not playing this game, you're a fool. This is my maybe my favorite looking card is Holy Knight. Yeah, just it doesn't get any better. That reminds me of like Diablo. White and gold armor is just too it's much for me to handle. That's what I meant by like when I'm painting white and black. It's like that right there. That's what you want. It's that got, would be so hard to paint though. It would not be easy, especially if you're doing non non metallic metal gold. With white, that's like two of the hardest things you could do. Nobody does one. that. And next to each other. Oh my god. Okay, so here's here's what we know we want. <laughs> Tyler, I assume he's quoting me. I'm gonna make a career out of games. I don't care what you say. I mean, that's part of the drive, right? <laughs> wow, what's going on here? What's going on? Oh, wow. Cool. And I said... What is this? That's exactly what I said. You know what I love about Odette, what besides is yet? her looking fantastic, is she has a spell board of three. She's not that fancy, and I love it. Yeah, I like the not fancy ones, too. Hmm... Attack value to another target unit is the only unit exact so you may deal with it. Okay, I get that. You pay a cost to your it. You may place that die on the spell. Use a die on the spell and there's always for the paying cost. Cool. I feel like I should start with this royal charm in play. I think people do that. I need a thing. I need a beefier unit. She doesn't have any any uh No beef. No beef. Maybe she should go to Arby's. What it <laughs> They just, have the meat. Just <laughs> delivered, just direct to the brain there. You know what it is. Tell me why I'm doing this. Why am I summoning these weeping spirits? What are they weeping about? Look at this. I mean, it was a sad, sad year. Zero two. They can't block, and you can destroy them as a side action. So what's that about? There's got to be cards in here that make It's because you can play it on my battlefield. It's like a, the blood mm -hmm. puppet, but different. Cost me cards instead of battlefield damage. five. That could get really annoying. That's why we... You got all these fancy angels and you got these weeping spirits. Weeping spirits are why we made meteors. <laughs> Speaking of me meteor, uh, clear the board. I don't like this strategy. Just taking it off the table. You might want to pick a different character. <laughs> and just win it out there. It doesn't <laughs> seem like you're... You're immediately <laughs> raging against the machine without customizing. I was raging against the machine. It would be machine. one thing if you were deck building right now, but you're not. What are, I'm just trying to figure out how am I supposed to win the game here with this mess. I think this Sun Sister needs to come into play. What up, Jeffrey Santos? Saying these TC streams are bad for my wallet. I've gotten into Arkham, Ashes, Marvel Champions, and I just picked up an old Netrunner core set on Facebook. Hey, you will not regret any of those, uh, least of which is Netrunner. That is a phenomenal game. It's worth owning, especially if you get like the revised core. Um, I think that's uh, that, that's a game to own. It apps like 
If you're gonna own an old game, that's, that's high on the list. Dysphoria, whose collection is this? Or is it the stores? Uh, I guess it's the stores. I thought it was mine. I have my name on the box. It's yours. I'll let you organize it. <laughs> I would like Got payment for what I have provided the stream. Steven's just very concerned about getting that deck built. And his house. There's a lot yeah. of... It's the greatest deck of all. What have you in... That first time you were saying how much a deck would cost you, yeah, I was very confused for a while because I was thinking deck of cards and I did not understand. Like, are you playing like an all legendary set of flesh and blood? Alex Becker, what's the latest on the champions packs? I've seen people in Australia or somewhere get Quicksilver. Uh, so what happened it's is all a mess. Uh, what actually happened is there was a UK distribution center that randomly sent out them way early when they were originally supposed to release, but they got pushed back because of the two-month delay in the year, and then also uh, something else happened. We weren't supposed to get a release in December, but we're supposed to get Quicksilver in the first week of January, and then, no, Wasp. And then Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are supposed to come out in February. So, you know what happened to you? Did you hear? That UK Distribution Center can no longer sell those products. I'm just kidding. There was no penalties at all. <laughs> oh man, he's got jokes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, they're not officially released. When they are officially released and legal to send to you, if you're a subscriber, you will have them. That that's the content thorn in the our truth. side. People being able to ship stuff places. Well, it's just like yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I, I, I was uh, sloppy with my work, and I face no consequences. How many cool. basics do you have? One. I have one basic. Yes. I have three, so it's up to me. I'll go second. <laughs> this for you, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going first then. Hmm. Okay. Go distant. Taylor saying that you're going to love Astria after deck building. Chris Shorter saying, just started out there. A lot of these later pre generated decks aren't as playable. <laughs> Some of the earlier ones. <laughs> cool. Because, <laughs> you know, they released as decks, but they still, they have the design philosophy of something's a problem, let's design something that beats it. Yeah. You know, stacks on yeah, stacks. Yeah, so it's not, not ideal. Uh, so a lot of the decks, uh, e even like you're playing that uh, previous deck with Koji, it's like, I think one Sleeping Bear is two at the most, but one is probably the correct number, but one's they give you three because they want to give you a place. Yeah, one's all right. Just enough. Okay, so I'm going to get a Summon Steadfast Guardian out uh, because it's going to allow me to, to put in a really nice blocker at any time that things are going to get weird for me. And I know that Odette just brings the pain when it comes to the number of units on the board. So, so prepare for pain. <laughs> Ike says Astra's Precon is really bad now. Well, hey, I'm going to make it work, man. I'm going to beat you with half my deck. <laughs> I'm going to play Summon Emperor Lion. Okay. And then as a side action... You don't need those side actions. I'm gonna go ahead and play a shield mage. What? Cost me an That's a side? Blizzard. That's right. A Again. side of shield mage here. <laughs> All right, let's play a royal charm. I love this card. I will probably play this card in constructed no matter what deck I'm using. And then side action. You know, I've got everything that I could possibly want here. So no side actions here. <laughs> oh, Ophelia. Play a summon winged lioness. Mm. Now we're playing. Okay. I love Odette. Have I mentioned that? You have. You have. Yep. I was playing Imperial Ninja with a snake and a heart. No. Yeah. No. How much does uh, Emperor Lion, what are the stats on that? Just asking for a friend. Emperor Lion is a 3 3 0. 
And when he enters play, I can search my draw pile and reveal a law and place it into my hand. I can immediately play it, ignoring the action or side action cost. Sh Shuffle my draw pile. <clears throat> and the lioness is a 2 2 1 that cannot be guarded against. This ninja's not, not good. Um, Taylor saying, Yes, I finally got my name mentioned. Thanks. Taylor Danford. All right, glad nice. to have you. <laughs> Taylor Danford. You the ever, one, you ever seen that? On, you probably have. If you ever like hop on like a super famous person's like Instagram or Twitter live, and they'll know. They know people want to like just hear their name, and so people will be like saying, oh, "I love you," and then they'll just be like reading names off, and it's like, I mean, it's kind of cool, but also like I'm not here to just hear you read names off. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm gonna instead play a son sister. I love that part. The sun, the sun, the sun, the sun. All right, we're going to uh, pay for two, but we've got an ability here. What After you pay to a the cost, ninja? Did it go away? It went away. It turned into a sun <laughs> sister. After you pay a cost using the big side, you may place it on this spell if there's nothing on it, and then I can side action to use this for free. Wow, that's like a an, cool card. It's a great, it's a, dude. Where's that been? I love it so much. It's like so the, good. the idea of just getting to use one of these uh, sides for free, it's only charm or divine. But it's just like, ah, pump to three and go. Why is it only Charm or Divine? It says it on the card. Oh, uh -huh, there it is. <laughs> I didn't see the symbol. Yeah. I just, you know, yeah. words. Yeah. Taylor Danford. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for Taylor Danford. <laughs> That's so good. All right, X-Wing players. Well... I'm going to take that shield mage to task here. Nah. Nah, man. man. <clears throat> I think it's time. Ring out the big guns. Two angels and a basic for a emperor lion. What kind of law are you bringing in here? And let's, uh, let's lay down the law. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, that's funny, Northern Lights. People will sub a famous Twitter streamer just uh, to see if they'll say the dirty name that they type in. Like Bart Simpson, Colin Mose. So I assumed when I played this card... <laughs> there were laws? There are laws. <laughs> but if you don't want the laws you've got, then you should take that back. Just summon okay. the other big thing. The winged what lioness. Did, what did he cost me? Everything. Yeah, I agree. Dinosaur um, Royal Charm that saves Nature Dice would be insane. So, uh, it's got Nature Dice on the, it. The law. I, no, it doesn't. This will shock you. The law that I like the most is the one where I can have him do damage equal to. Yeah, the old. And vice versa. Yeah. The aggression, I don't even know what it is. The it's one that's the actually very immediately useful with it's the land. Okay, yeah. cool. No, it's not. It's they important. make you work for it. Yeah, of course. You know. Um, Sue, so instead, let's just play a Holy Knight. Okay. You're up. I have achieved peak. Well, um, Let's take a main action with Astria. Place an exhaustion token on an unexhausted unit. Seems good. Just look at me. I'm I'm hypnotizing. <laughs> Alright. Let's uh exhaust this summon winged lioness. Should like remove an exhaustion token? No. Gonna be... <laughs> I'm gonna be so good, the wrong one. Got him. Uh, <laughs> and that is going to cost me an angel and a basic. Are you an angel? Oh, well, yes, I am. So I can't attack your units directly with Shield Mage out. That's right. Can I attack them indirectly? I suppose. So if I, like, for instance, right now. Wait, and that includes Shield Mage? Yeah. What am I supposed to do about that? Nothing. 
Nothing. I have probably had none direct damage. I'm probably going <laughs> to shut down forever. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, so if I swing with Sun Sister like a plus one, yeah, you could have exhausted her. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I could have. Steadfast Guardian. Yet here we are. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Ike saying Holy Holy Knight cannot be targeted. So Holy Knight says it can't be targeted by spells an opponent controls. Your Phoenix Point ability is not a spell. Not a spell. That's right. It used to be. It used to be everything. This is the new Holy Knight. It used to be absurdly everything. Yeah. I like. Look at our board. Wow. It's slowly oh, just control. tilted. There we go. Back to pass and loose here. Steadfast Guardian is in play. It has unit guard, and you, it does not exhaust for countering. So I can block, counter, do one, boom. I'm with it. And then uh, no side action for me. Taylor, can you... Uh, Taylor Danford. Taylor Danford. Taylor you, Danford. Can you build... Uh, Ashes decks online and post them. Isn't there like an you Ashes DD? Ashes dot live. Ashes dot live. That's right. Somebody spin up the old GitHub instance of. Did I sound like I knew what I was talking about there? Yeah, I did. Sure did. Spin up a, a GitHub. GitHub. I don't even know what that means. Spin up a Git branch it. Well, that's just not good for business. It's steadfast. But I can't guard the lioness. That's right. So you could ace that sun sister. I could. But instead, we'll play a Sword of Virtue. Oh, Lord. Cost me two basics. Destroy a target unit, or remove all wound tokens and exhaustion tokens from a target unit. Hmm, good question. That one. You getting rid of the Guardian? Yeah, it's out of here. I can't deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You, that's a summon spell? Oh, I get that thing yeah, back yeah, here. Yeah, it's happening forever. I may not do this. Let's rethink. Just uh, get your Holy Knight all healed up. Oh, holy night. I hate that shield mage. Good. <laughs> All right, here it is. Uh, we're going to side buff. action, buff the lion. I'm going to attack the Steadfast Guardian. Mm. Can't guard it. Is it. What's the blocking? Uh, Phoenix Board can block it, right? Units can't guard it? So I think blocking for a unit is always guarding. That's right. And it, blocking for a Phoenix Born is blocking. It's blocking. That's right. Okay, so if a unit's being attacked, it's always going to be an instance of guard, no matter where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a good rule. Hmm. All right, I'll counter. Take one. Call me in the morning. Exhausted. It's very tiring. Put that away. It's still there. Put it away. Goes away at the end of the turn. I could not exhaust. Side action, unexhaust, and attack. <laughs> Are you done? That was my action, yeah. That's all you know. We're in the game now. Fate Breaker saying, I love how these cards look on the table. Such good art and card design. It's beautiful. It is really something else. All right, side action. Swing for three. Add Odette because I can't target a unit. Thanks. Haha. -ha. I'll take three. Mm -hmm. That was a good swing. Thanks. I'm going to put my dice away like a civilized Ashes player. Over to you. What's your 19 is your health? 19 is my health. Soul sister, soul sister.
Uh, sort of virtue. What's that? Clear this. I can destroy a unit or move all exhaustion. Would you get this out of here already? It stays around. Forever? For the round. I thought it was just the turn. I don't think it's the turn. Ah, uh, it's totally the turn. Everything's the turn. Place a die on target unit you control with a divine die on it. While this die is on that unit, its attack value is increased by one. Place this die in your exhausted pool at the end of the round. Oh my. Those are better. Yeah, I wasn't messing with you. Yeah, that's true. I thought you were messing with me. I was just being serious. <laughs> All right, so you sort of virtued me, and then here comes the winged lioness. Well, it's your action, but yes. So you got three, three attackies. All right, let's drop in an Imperial Ninja. Yeah. Uh, I'll explain the text in a second. It really is <laughs> not impactful. And then side action, charm you. Uh, this is, I look at your hand. You either discard that card or two from the top. Yeah, well, I don't have a hand. So I'll discard the card you pick. Um. Might as well. I use Odette's ability. You just mm. do damage to your ninja. And then I take damage equal to your attack. Here you go. Your action. <laughs> You're going to get that swing. Play a summon light bringer on the table. Mine? Mm hmm. I'll swing at your sun sister. You got it. You can block. Your choice is yours. Can't be guarded against. Oh, that's right. <laughs> eh, what a troll. <laughs> Block. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Got him. All right. I'll pass after that. Um, summon Lightbringer. And then I'm going to side action this up. This is going to be hilarious. You're going to love this. All right, when it comes into play, choose a target opponent. You must attack as your next main action, if possible. <laughs> Does that carry over to the next round? No, just means I have to attack with a shield mage and do nothing. <laughs> and exhaust. That's funny. <laughs> All right, I'll attack with the shield mage. Who's <laughs> laughing now, bun? Do nothing. Are you going to counter? No, not blocking at all. All right, I exhaust. All right, side action, pump one, swing for two on Odette. Nice. Take two. <laughs> or I could kill the shield mage. I'll just block with that. Yeah, that's right. That's just okay. what that is. <laughs> Take it back. Into the round. All right. The old devastating peacock there at the end of the turn. No ah. one saw that coming. <laughs> Not even Steven. The card dungeon, you do need to dive into this game more. Wow. It's worth diving into. A lot of angels. Wow. Are you an angel? Somehow. Greatest dialogue of all time. <laughs> Thanks, Annie. Annie. Somehow Palpatine is returned. <laughs> it's the best line in the whole movie, man. I haven't even watched it. I know it's insane. Can you imagine? The I... ultimate evil returns. It'd be like if I was like, in real conversation, like somehow the devil returned. <laughs> That's We're not going to look into that any further. We're just going to let it be. Anyways. I digress. Mm. Am I going first? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, how do you not? Uh, let's kick it off with Neil. A card that we will remember for the rest of time while playing Ashes. Exhaust every unexhausted unit. Does that not affect the Holy Knight, I would assume? Oh, hold on a second then. You can't be knelt. 
Uh, I'm not targeting, I don't think. Is this one of those games that has targeting rules? Who's to say? Kind of like how when you do that, do two damage to a unit versus do two to everything, yeah. you can still do two to everything. What does it say? Place one exhaustion token on each unexhausted unit. I think we both know that's not targeting. I'm going to put exhaustion unless Nick tells me in chat that it doesn't work that way. Not targeting. Just for you, that's targeting. good enough for me. <laughs> it seems like a good card. <laughs> For this exact moment. <laughs> well. Target has to be written, just like in Skytear, so that's good. Now I've had those weeping spirits. I get it now, right? And it's just like, oh, you're bored. Sucks. Zero is zero. <laughs> what a silly thing. Let's exhaust, spend an angel and a baker and get another lioness in here. I need bodies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll use Astra's ability on the Royal Charm. Exhaust here. Yep. I think we get what this deck is. I have now <laughs> seen the light. Let's go two angels and a base right. Getting an emperor. Go ahead. All right, let's summon a uh, steadfast guardian here. Side action? Let's take a look. I'm not going to get a lob because they're all in my hand. I'll do two. Oh, wait. I did that wrong. I have to put the basic to the big symbol. See? Oh, I see. I see. All the laws are in your hand? No. Mm -mm. Um, let's action here. I'll deal two damage to your guardian and I'll take one. And get it's not gone yet, right? It's got three. I'm not that. Oh, right. We're not dead you yet. You only do two? Yep. Oh, great. And then I'll side action. This is exhausted. Spend an angel on heal and I'll take two off for my Phoenix form. Oh, okay. This for you. Sad trombone. This is so funny. It's just ridiculous. Uh, Mark of the Goddess. Choose a target unexhausted unit and opponent controls. Deal damage equal to the, its attack value to another target unit that opponent controls. Or the shield mage. Hold on. Maybe it's the shield mage. Do you have more shield mage magi in hand? There's three in the back. I know there's like four laws in there. I'm thinking I could start picking off your units. Because if I don't, you're swinging for like 20 next turn. <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, let's, let's hit the shield mage. All right, let's you got it. the shield mage. You better have some answers. All right. I will play as my action, inside action, meteor. Oh, goodness. Two angels, one damage to everything. Every unit. You see what I did there? I get it. You blew the board up. Your action. <clears throat> I got tricks. Mm-hmm. This is going to get feisty next round if you don't put some bodies on the table. Let the bodies hit the floor. Two for ninja. Mm -hmm. No side actions. That may not be true. Yeah, no side action. 
meditate. Here. Two lions, huh? Home of Detroit. What up, Jose? Ah, man. Um... Okay. Exchange there. 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 It's not a good exchange for me. Mm -mm. All right, let's summon old uh, Lightbringer. And you got to attack as your next action. You can still take a side action, I believe. When choosing a main action during the next turn, you have to attack if you can. What's that? Yeah, Jose, good to see you. Hmm. Him in there. I will attack your Lightbringer. I'm going to ask you that. Yeah, take three. Pass around. And then I'll pass my side action. Okay. All right, let's do... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is actually safer. Uh, let's pump the Lightbringer and swing at your Holy Knight. You got it. Use that there. Come on. Side action. Side action. I will go ahead and drop one to pump this up. Now okay. <laughs> we're just throwing Pass. lions at each other. Yeah. Pass, huh? Justin says, first time seeing this game. Love the art. It's, it's so good. You got to play it. Seriously. So good. Uh, pump one. Let's swing. You can only have one Emperor Lion, right? Yep. That can be but one Emperor. He has returned. Mm. I'll swing at the Emperor Lion for, t for two or for three. Oh. oh. Block with it at. And then when I declare, oh, it's in a declared. Look at a random card from your hand. How many laws do I get? Law of assurance. So you can either discard. The, okay. <laughs> Got it. Your main action. Pass. Play another summon stuff as guardian. Uh -huh. Pass. Pass. Got your recovered though. Look at that nonsense. Woof. Lionesses in the tank. Hmm. Wanted that to be better. There's that weeping spirit. Watch out. Got there. <laughs> you know, Rudy Crazy Eyes there. <laughs> well, well, you see. <laughs> well, that's side action, a shield mage. It's a side action? Yeah, still. What is happening? Where's Nick Conley? Swing. Get Nick Conley on the case. Somebody these, get him on the horn. These three at uh, Astria. Mm hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Take seven? I'm going to take seven. You must have something bad. <laughs> Get a lion parade. Get down with your bad self. All right. Let's summon a light bringer. Actually, let's side action this to a lion as a meditate. Let's summon a light bringer and put it on the royal charm. Uh, and then shield mage must attack. Your favorite and mine. Peacock control. Let's go. The new hotness. Buff the shield mage. <laughs> Swing at the light bringer. Swinging for one at the light bringer. <laughs> I'll take it. You got it. Joke's on you. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we're going to have to... We're, the lions are critical here. I think you take it while you got it. What's my spell? My battlefield is only four. Let me start killing something. Me. That's the answer. do 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 Mm hmm. Hmm. Four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. What's your health? Eighteen. So I have nine left. Okay. Um, I'm going to pump Imperial Ninja as a side action mm -hmm. and swing it up for three. You got it. And then I'll look at your hand. You look? Random card. Oh, random. I thought you just going to see it. Holy Knight. Just go to the top two. <laughs> and now I know. Mine? Yep. Let's play a lot of sight. No, no, what does that do? Uh, when it comes into play, I can draw two. What? And then no player can play reaction spells while this is in play. Okay. Now I have a main action. Yeah. It's interesting. When I was first this time, right? Yeah, you were. Wait, we're swinging. He's as pretty as the angels when they sing. Holy night. Exhaust that holy night. Damn, can anyone else hear someone faintly whispering Super Mario? <laughs> that was Steven. Uh, exhaust that thing with her ability. I'm tired of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got some side. I got some side actions here. Good for you. No, I meditate threes. Oof. Oof. Ah. It's lion time. It's the only way we can get damage in this deck. Let's destroy that. <laughs> Now's the time. <clears throat> uh, 
Hmm. Are you an are you an angel? All right, let's line up. Swing for two. No debt. You got it. Fifteen of eighteen. Mine? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Let's... Just for you, the experience is phenomenal. Heal for two. What? Oh, that's a card. It's called heal. And then I'll play another Summon Emperor Lion. Here just we in go. Case. Just in case things happen. All right, let's summon it. What? Steadfast Guardian. Uh, it's going to cost me a heart and an angel. It's going to look phenomenal. Phenom. Oh. You can only have one these days. That focus ability, not quite as hot as it once What's was. What's the focus ability? Uh, remove all wound tokens and exhaustion tokens from a target steadfast guardian you control. So if you carry one into the next turn, mm. it can get kind of interesting. I mean, you could even do it on this one this turn because you're focused. So you could exhaust it. I can remove wounds and exhaustions from a target steadfast guardian. So like, it'll never have wounds or exhaustion when I summon it. That makes sense. But can't you pay the cost again? Even if you can't summon it? I think so. Is that true? Yeah. Oh. So then focus. You can still use the focus ability now. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so that's my main action, and then I'll pass my side. Pass. Okay. Buff. It's working out. Side action. Two. You got it. Let's play a power through here. Plus one attack if I destroy a unit. It has overkill one. Wow. The beefy knight. It's one divine die per thing. Um... Use the summon ability. Mm -hmm. Focus. Remove an exhaustion and all wounds from a steadfast guardian. Pass. Swing for two at Odette. Down to one health. Can she do it? Mm, your main action? Pass. Yeah, okay, summon Lightbringer. No. Pass. Can't summon it. Uh, play a summon weeping spirit. Okay. I'll also pass. This flips. I will say I'm now ready to party. You can kneel me, but it'll kneel you too. Kneel for a kneel, eye for an eye. There's a book about that. Get it? <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. Um, oh, cool. So even after you exhaust, no, then the blank, blank. After it's exhausted, it's blank. Um. I'm going to start with a kneel. <laughs> Shakes his head. Cool. This is just a choke deck. Absurd. <laughs> I'm going to side action some stuff. Let me get a couple of lions out, just preparing. Just prepare a lion. Feed them to the lions. Feed them to the lions. Feed them to the lions. I say feed them to the lions. All right. I'm going to use this action, deal two damage to my shield mage, mm. and take zero myself. 
Yeah. Summon this weeping spirit. Side action, destroy it. <laughs> Main action, uh, Holy Knight. Exhaust Holy Knight, Astria. Play. Sword of Virtue. Remove this. Mmm. I got tricks. <laughs> What's that overkill do? One damage to your Phoenix Point. Wouldn't it be nice? Oxfordor, seriously, this game isn't going like I anticipated at all. I am animated says, yeah, it's actually pretty close. Oxfordor. No. That card's busted. Really good. All right. Gotta have options here. Got that one battlefield slot left. I mean, you're swinging for four is not too bad. I mean, 15. Not too worried about it. Uh, you can only have one Steadfast Guardian in play. Shador. Only one. Only one. I could unexhaust that one yeah. with the focus ability, but I don't have any stars. I'm going to play a Sun Sister, two, yeah. two Angels, and then I'm going to meditate twice. Up to snakes. It's a long road over there. Mm-hmm. We'll find our way. Meditate for one, two, mm, see a lion, three. No, uh -oh. you got a meteor coming. No, oh. what's going on here? Meteor would be sick. Uh, then I'll pass. Okay, I just have to be able to match that. All right, let's um. Pump one, three to Odette. Block here. Counter. Counter. Fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. Uh, oh, no, I don't get to use that. Let's summon an Emperor Lion. Oh, he's already out. I can't do that. Summon a uh, winged lioness. Angel and a basic. Lioness! And then... Boom. Axiard, wait. Um... He had five unexhausted units at the start of the round. So he just blocks with one of them. Good pump. A tea dice left, huh?
Huh. I don't have enough. <laughs> I've done this poorly. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Hmm. Taylor Danford. Boo Gotti. I was almost able to squeak out what I needed. I thought there was no way I was making it past this round. Yeah, well, you sh I don't think you should. I think there was a sequence where I yeah, could have like one. looking at a chessboard. It's like, I know there's yeah. a set of moves here that would win me the game. I, I just don't know what they are. I just got excited. <laughs> Started kneeling everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see if there's any weird thing I can do. Northern Lights, uh, the tokens look good. They have like white borders. I haven't, I've barely used them because <laughs> we launched our tokens pretty soon after the game came out. Um, but they look good, just like everything else in this game. There's cardboard. Mmm. Oh, man. Dang. Dang. Joe, let's go. Says, hey, guys, will you be previewing the upgrade kit? Uh, yeah, I mean, once we get it in, we'll definitely take a look at it. But it's all the cards we have here are in that upgrade kit. Mmm. Okay. Oh, there's a weird out here. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. I love it. It's so weird. I love it. But do you love it? Yeah, it was the kind of thing you had to look at like 20,000 times to find it. I may have found it. It depends on what you have in your hand. Um, okay, let's... Steadfast Guardian. The Royal Charm. On exhaust. Pass the side action. You used a summon? Yes, I did. Thank you. You're good. Mm -hmm. I can, only, can I pop more than once? Mm -mm. It says that doesn't have a divine. I was looking at that just a second ago. Mm. Swing at Steadfast Guardian. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Actually, you know what? Better than that. Side action. Let's play a power through. Hmm. And then we'll swing at the Steadfast Guardian for four with overkill one. Powerful, yeah. If I just block that with Astro, you lose, though, yeah? Can't be guarded. Hmm. Counter. Take one. You got me. Exhausted. It took me a minute to remember that was a thing. I was like, wait, I can just take it off the table. Check this out. Summon Weeping Spirit. Pass. There it is. <laughs> it's like, how? Nice. So they, you pump by one. I can't do anything. And then you can get me by Weeping one. Weeping Spirit can swing for one, yeah. Because I forgot the Royal Charm. It's like that mm. was the one that I missed. But that was close. That's amazing. That was close. That's amazing. I was When I was drawing my five, I really I had two other copies of Meteor in the deck. Uh -huh. And I knew it. You clear it out, yeah. And, and neither. Gets they really were both on the bottom five of my deck. Because mm. um, like a one AoE even is pretty good for me. But because I have these th a bunch of threes sitting around. But that was really close. That was awesome. That was good. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. These games are tight. Yeah. They're so fun. I feel like I'm at the point of the game where I can't just play it lightly. <laughs> oh, no. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But, like... It's too serious. The, the, it's not even serious. <laughs> it's, like, just the amount of energy it takes me to play this game. 
Now that you know how to actually play it well, yeah. Because I can see <laughs> what's going on, and like it's like, oh, now I have to balance all these things in my brain. It's really amazing. This is the kind of game, It's it, just the content that's out, especially with the upgraded versions of everything, I think I could play this forever with no new content <laughs> yeah. and be totally fine with it. Yeah, don't tell people that. They won't subscribe, Zach. I mean, I still do want all of it, uh, but at the same time, like, some games, it's definitely like I need more content to come out for me yeah. to keep being in engaged. Yeah. But I think the first five and just the combination of the stuff you can pull off in this game based on what you're playing against, it's like... You know what's crazy when you really think about it? Tell me more. I'm here for it. I think 90... I, I don't I run the math, but 99 or 98% of all cards are usable with any Phoenix board. It's like almost all of them. Like how wide open? That's insane. You can you can customize to your heart's content. I mean, I'm pretty sure the only unusable cards by a specific Phoenix Born are the signature cards of other Phoenix Born. Yeah, that's it. Otherwise, it's just a resource choice. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, early on. I didn't feel that way, uh, for whatever reason. But in retrospect, even looking back at first edition, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. You can play anything with anybody. I never got to this level when the first edition when the one point it was no. out. But I, think I didn't get it. I think we've played more than we did back then because we've been playing weekly since August. Yeah, we played way more than we did then. So we have 20 sessions at four or five hours each. And I was I was willing to play more because the cards are simpler. Like there's not like the paragraph of like, uh, yeah. And then it's also just uh, everything feels more balanced. So it just feels like a more exciting experience. Well, I also like when we when we really played, there were only like six Phoenix born. Mm hmm. So the other part of that is the carpool is very small. That's true. And so yeah. there was less, like I think the power level is probably lower as well, just in general back then, um, because you're dealing with such a limited pool. And realistically... And the meta shook out really quickly. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's Jessa. This is the answer. <laughs> and then not only that, but if you only have one or two of the Phoenix Born that you really dig, mm -hmm. you have one option. But now I'm looking at it and like there's like 15 characters I really like. Yeah. So like that's what I meant by like this pool is big enough, but also not so big that it's crazy. But no, it's it's fantastic. And you can build them however you want. And it's kind of the thing where I feel like in Netrunner, you know, I could build, for instance, I could build an Anarch deck that I, a concept that I really wanted to do, and then one of the five runners, I could tweak it for each of the five. Sure. Like even the Anatomy, Anatomy of Anarch played differently for Reina and Noise and sure. Wizard. It's like you can just build the deck you want and they'd be like, oh, what is this like out of Echo? What is this like out of Leo? What is this like? Yeah. It's like, oh, Absolutely. I love it so much. Well, and then some of the signature cards, like the Odette one there, that's the either destroy a unit or unexhaust and heal a unit completely. Mm -hmm. That means she can play the game differently. Even the same deck would play very differently with her potentially yeah. because of her ability in that card, which is just enough. It's just, just enough to make it different. Hey, Northern Lights, great to see you. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you uh, learned a little bit more about Ashes and uh, we'll maybe jump in, maybe grab a core set. You know, we'd love to see some stuff on your channel for the game. Maybe Northern Lights over Ashes is the next is the next. I wonder iteration. what the, the world of Ashes is called. I'm sure there's a name for it. Like the... Yeah, there's got to be a name for it, yeah. yeah. Kind of like, uh, yeah. Tom, it's great to see you too. Thomas Morin, always good to have you around. Thanks everybody for joining us. This is always just a blast to do. Um, it is our last Ashes stream of 2020. So uh, when we get back into the swing things, it'll be pretty quick when that upgrade kit will start hitting and we'll have more information probably when, when we come back in 2021. For sure, because we'll come back. We're taking two weeks off and then I'll be doing a solo stream week. I, I don't know if Ash is even on the list that week because it's solo. You're definitely doing that Sky Tier um, solo, right? Definitely you doing Sky Tier solo. And middle Earth CCG because yeah. you got it. Uh, but the week after that's when you're coming back. And that week could be the week it's the upgrade that's coming. That could be um, it. And yeah. if not, it'll... it'll one of those couple of first weeks is probably going to be the week we're charging unless something goes wrong mm -hmm. uh, since we usually charge a couple weeks out. So we're close. The upgrade kit's going to be here. The Reborn products are going to be here. I'm really excited for everyone to have the product in hand. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Because uh, I, I just want to see what deck lists pop up. I was saying this to you is like, I'm obviously we play a lot on stream, but I'm really interested to basically just have people in the community say, here's the deck that I'm playing and then I can build it and just try it. Yeah, here's why it's good yeah. and here's what it does. Fantastic. Hey, thanks everybody for joining us. Have a great holiday season. Have a great Christmas. Have a great... Uh, whatever. I'm not as familiar holiday. with the other ones. I'm a, a Christmas guy myself, but uh, whatever you're doing, have a great time with it. Um, connect with family, but of course be safe. That's what we're all trying to weigh right now. And uh, good news on the horizon, I think, for 2021. And let, let's, let's make it the best year ever. I'm looking forward to it. That's thanks for being here. Stay safe. We'll catch you on the other side of the holiday.